Mutiny. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Receive Podcast. Mutiny. This week, brought to you by Casper and Nature Box. <laughs> I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Barbara. I am Bernie. And I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Barbara. I'm Bernie. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. Barbara. Bernie. Gus. Gavin. Barbara. We're curious how long Gus. this will go. You are the you, one who ruined it. <laughs> you have you to give You are the one who said, keep going. You, you have you to give in. You have to give in. I didn't. In you gave in. Don't you have another podcast? Do I? He did. What? I did? Well, you no, had a spot of science. Oh, a spot of science? I was yeah. actually thinking about Whatever. the D&D show. So oh, that's I... a kind of, well... They're both in broadcast. Yeah. Who show is that? I don't know that? if Heroes at Halfwits you can get on iTunes. That is an that. excellent question. We just, we had that big debate at a uh, recent Greenlight meeting. So, Gus, it? answer the question. Who is the lead creative Jeff. on Heroes and Halfwits? Jeff. Okay. Really? So a person who doesn't work at the company anymore, or currently on hiatus. Who is? Jeff. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you made it sound like I was wrong. No, no, I'm not saying yeah, that. Yeah. I'm saying I'm going with your yeah, information yeah, yeah, okay. that he's the lead creative on it. And who do you, who do you think came up in the meeting? <laughs> I assume Jeff. No, not at all. Oh. Frank. Frank. Yeah. Frank doesn't work here. Is I know. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so welcome to so, the So it sounds like today you had a bunch of meetings <laughs> that were trying to find out who makes our shows. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't today. That and was you like, were that was like two weeks ago. Oh, okay. Which we were we were greenlighting the next season of Heroes and Halfways. Hey guys, my uh, my timesheet's over. Here. Or as I like to call it, Dunjeff and Dragus. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie was being really sassy to me before the podcast Fuck started. Off, I was not. Yeah, what? you were. What's what, all this, this podcast? Well, he, apparently, Bernie Burns is drunk. I had three drinking lunches. <laughs> well, today. let's keep that going. Can we get him another drink? <laughs> it's right get, there. Get on these. Fucking Fireman's Four. I had three drinking lunches today. This could be a big mistake. So Kevin. it's Monday. We know that. Drunk people Is that like what to your drink. Monday's like? That's not what my Monday's like. So I'm I gotta get a plane in a couple hours. Oh, you do? Brag about I'm it. running. I'm Are you running. flying it? <laughs> no, I'm not flying. Uh, plane. Don't drink and fly. You're flying tonight? E? <laughs> I fly like right after this. Where are you going? <laughs> mm hmm. That way? Over there? Mexico. LA. I'm going to LA. Oh, I'm going to San Francisco. Are you? Why are you going to San also Francisco? Tonight? Well, like seven in the morning. So that's basically tonight. So like really late tonight. Yeah. yeah. See, I just did the, I just did the 8 p.m. And I'm like, shoot, and I go there. I don't like flying to San Francisco. I like San Francisco. It's just annoying to fly to. Why don't you like flying there? It's very it's far. No place. Oh, yeah, there's plenty. You yeah, there. Here's why he doesn't actually like it. He doesn't like it because Gavin is faced with the conundrum of, does he fly American Airlines and do a layover somewhere? Or does he fly Virgin and fly direct? Non-stop. And then it doesn't count. It's nonstop, thank you. Nonstop direct. Here's what I'm doing. And then it doesn't count as a flight, for real. Guess which okay. one I picked. You picked Virgin. American. You picked American. American. I picked Virgin, because I just want to get at How do I know? I, I know him so well. Why, why'd you pick it? I just want to get that quick. And now you're mad because it doesn't count as a flight, for real. I'm not that mad. Well, Gavin you... has enough points, right? You're, are Got you executive? My, Miles coming out of my anus. Executive Platinum? Did you mm-hmm. see that stupid new terminal at LAX? No. Oh, the celebrity one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you sent me that. <laughs> so it's like a membership. Yeah. And it's then like, you pay like three grand every time you fly. Yeah, it's like, I think it's like a $7,500 year membership, and then you pay three grand every time you fly. Every time you fly. A waste of what money. is that for? It's like a private terminal where there's no paparazzi, so for like celebrities. And then they say that it's like five minutes from curb to plane. Except here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's what I thought about that. That celebrity terminal. It, it's designed to be for celebrities where they won't be bothered, but what it will be is it'll be a bunch of rich people who want to be around celebrities and talk to them constantly. Mm. That's exactly what mm. that's going to turn into, I think, at least. I mean, it would have to be a pretty high... I mean, if there's there's not a high chance that you'd run into someone in that terminal. Like, on the I day like, you decide to go... I feel like even just flying out of the normal terminals at LAX, I see actors and people from ho- associated with Hollywood yeah, like, all what, the time. What are the kind of actors that would pay that much to fly in that terminal? Like, the really big stars, They would just obviously. fly private, I would assume. Mm. Yeah. I would assume. Like, okay, maybe you'll run into one person. Is that worth three grand? I, I did read an interesting or stat. a chance to do it, right? No. That the apparently it's like, no. it's like 1,500 steps, typically, or something like that, for a passenger from the moment they walk into the airport in the moment they step on the plane. And this terminal reduces that to like 70 steps. Yeah. <laughs> I read that same stat. That's like their stat. Maybe it was more than 50. The rest of it, they put you on a cart, basically. Being in an airport isn't even that bad. Do you There's ride no, the cart in the airport? No. No. I was with, who was I with? I was with Ashley and Ellie in an airport. And the cart came by, and it was like 11 at night. Is it that one of the little trolley things that takes you through? Yeah. No, no. Not the not the tram. Like it was just it's like a, a cart, cart, like an electric for, cart. For old people. Yeah. Oh, with the, with the one guy driving. Yeah, yeah, with the one guy who was always yeah. like, excuse the cart, excuse the cart. It was in DFW. And he stopped and he goes, I'll give you a ride to your gate. And I was like, I'm not getting on the cart. 
Like that's that was like the dude in Monty Python. Because it's like <laughs> sitting in a disabled seat. I don't want to go on the guard. <laughs> the uh, no, yeah. I was like, I walk twelve gates, which in DFW is like a mile and a yeah. half. But I was like, I'm still gonna walk it. I don't the, give a shit. I feel like you're taking that away from someone who really needs it. Yeah. The only if way I would ride that car is if I could straddle my carry on and then just hold the back of it and ride it. I think that would be. I've Do you know they make a motorized carry on? I've, I've, I've ridden the cart. I've seen that. You've ridden the cart. I've ridden the cart. Yeah. See, Ellie and Ashley both got on the cart. What? And they rode off into the curved sunset. <laughs> they went around <laughs> the bend, and I lost them forever. So yeah. you just didn't get on out of the principle of, out of it. Spite. Totally didn't. Totally didn't get on. Not spite. The principle. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, that's why uh, I didn't go to Vegas. It wasn't spite. It was the principle. <laughs> that's why I got out of that minivan screaming like a lunatic <laughs> into the dark of Hollywood. So I want to call. Man, I wonder if I should even do this. Ghostbusters. Sounds like you should. I, I no. I want to call myself out on something, but it's like one of those things where the audience, did you, in general, doesn't notice something, and then you point it out, and then everybody notices it and thinks they discovered it themselves. Were you a douche hole? So Rooster Teeth has been a humorous content website for a long period of time. Three weeks. Years. Oh. Okay. So as such, <laughs> three decades. There were things that were, I think, acceptable to make jokes about when we started this company that are now no longer acceptable to make jokes about. And me, personally, I've been through a journey where I've learned things and I would no longer make jokes about those certain things. Yeah. And that episode of the Rooster Teeth Animated Adventures you're talking about, <clears throat> where you got out of the car oh, right. and you ran off into the night, that has a joke in it that I'm like, I wouldn't make that same joke today. But it's, it's literally 11 years ago I think I made that joke. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't make it today, and it's and so then it's the conundrum of, is it right to take it down, or is that censoring or mm. something? Like I don't agree with my own joke in that. It definitely. Do you know what it is? What is yeah, it? I think so. Calling someone like a pussy or something? Or? Nope. Oh. nope. I know. I know what it is. What is it? You guys can tell me. You're calling me out. You're now, not someone out. take this clip of the podcast and just take the Gavin portion of it, so it's like he's making the same joke. Did oh. Do you want to say it? I, I, I'm taking a guess here. Go ahead. Did you refer to me running down the street past trannies? I said you 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 jumped out of the van in transvestite alley. That, that was it, yeah. Like that would oh. be a CD part of town to be in. I totally wouldn't make that joke today. Yeah. yeah. You know? I feel like, I don't know if it's it's just like as you get older, you've, you, I used to really like offensive jokes. I used to, I said, it was like made me happy, I guess. But then I found that so many people were becoming more sensitive, like our audience was changing. And I was just offending people when they were getting upset. And I was like, yeah, but I stick by my joke. It was a funny joke. And then now I'm like, is it really worth offending people though? I, I feel like I've definitely Now you do just do it quietly to me so no one could hear it. <laughs> I do <laughs> feel like I, it off the air. I feel like that's your choice as a, if I may say so, a comedian. That you should be able to make that choice. And if you choose to make the joke about it, that I, I feel like that should be okay. Um, one of the things that, that bothers me most about when people get super offended is they laugh at all the jokes that we make and comedy is about dark stuff. You make fun of stuff that's hard in life. Like you make fun of be people being stupid. That's red versus blue or people being lazy. That actually makes people's lives really difficult, you know? You don't make jokes about a guy who's got a great life and lives in a big house. I mean, that's not funny, <laughs> yeah. you know? You make fun of stuff that's kind of dark. We make fun of you all the time, Bernie. And yeah, Thank you. And people get <laughs> offended when you make fun of their thing, and I don't think that's fair. Like, you can't wait until we get into your territory. And then be mad. And then be mad. Yeah. Like, yeah. you laughed at all the other jokes, but it's like, oh, you made fun of my thing. That's, uh, that's inappropriate. Yeah, there's some stuff where it's like, you, you learn from the people you're offending, the sort of extent of it. And I think at that point, you can make a judgment call on whether it's, it's still good. Like, there's still some stuff that I'll still say. But then if you offend a big group of people, it's like, here's how this is making my life worse. It's like... Yeah, maybe I don't need to be doing that then. Maybe. Yeah. Probably not. It's, it's, a, it's a really, it, it definitely changes as time goes on. Like as time goes on and as your own time goes on. And as your experience grows. Yeah. 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 I've, I, I've gotten cleaner. Maybe less funny though. But you listen, I mean, if. <laughs> what do you, why do you think that shift happened? Do you think it's because people share so much more of their lives and their experiences online with people and, and can relate to people that they've kind of grouped up to form these. I don't know, groups of people who are against this type of slander or against this type of insult. I think that over time, because of social media, I think that emotion has become a kind of currency that people have to make a post every day and they have to contribute in some way. Mm -hmm. And emotions are the way that they do that. And I don't know that it's a legitimate currency. I think in a lot of ways it's a counterfeit currency because I think, especially when it comes to political stuff, which is huge now, 
when people make these emotional out outbursts, there is this satisfaction, like this dopamine hit that you get. We talked about this, I think, in the uh, Connected Doc that, yeah. that you were in. They get that satisfaction of, oh, I, I, I spoke out against this thing. Ultimately, emotion over action really means nothing. And I think 2016, more than any year, taught us that, that emotions don't matter nearly as much as action. Right. Take the fucking actions. Even if it's one day and go out and do something, go out and do the fucking thing. But it what if <laughs> everyone changes their Facebook profile picture? Right, exactly. What if everyone does it? It goes back to like when Bono was getting shit about raising all that money for red and it turned out to be all for awareness. It's like we're aware. We're 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 aware of <laughs> You're HIV. Welcome. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Bono, for making <laughs> us aware. It's but we need action. Let's let the money go to like do something. I mean, yeah. at the time you told that joke, I don't think there would have been any offense taken by it because there wasn't sort of the new lingo around. It wasn't widespread. Like, people didn't say, like, a trans person back then. But don't you think that has more to do with us than people who were dealing with that at the time? Because being transsexual or transgender, I should say, being transgender is something that has existed for eons, probably as long as there's been yeah, people I, who I had just say any the kind of was, identity. The world was pretty ignorant about it until recently. That's I mean, but that doesn't take away the experience of those people. It just means that no, we maybe, all... Maybe yeah. they felt more alone in it to the fact that they couldn't... Or that they wouldn't feel justified speaking out against being hurt by something. Yeah, just maybe. like, oh, I guess like I'm really in the minority and this is just going to be a joke and I'm going to have to deal with it. Whereas now they feel like, oh, these people are also going through this thing and are have finding issue with yeah, it. Yeah, it's just like that history of being marginalized for so long. Yeah. And then, you know, like you said, like finding other people and building community from that. Do you ever get offended online? Um, Aside from people insulting your dogs? I don't think so. I get annoyed online, but I don't think I ever really get offended online. Yeah, that's that was the thing that I used to struggle with the most is that I don't I, I don't, I've never been offended by someone I don't know. Have you ever felt threatened? Yes. yes. I know you have. I don't want to go into <laughs> it, but I know you have, Gus. But that's that's the thing that I feel like I should be more empathetic about. When people make threats at me online, I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> First of all, I live in Texas. If you're gonna come up to somebody's house in Texas, good luck. You know what I mean? It's it's I'm 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 a traditional Texan. I'm a gun owner. Texas is a, has a very strong castle law. Yeah, it really does. So, and and, and I guess because I'm a grown man, I don't take that stuff very seriously. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm aware of it, but it doesn't like I don't I'm not cowed by it. You know, I also think that most people behind a keyboard on the internet are just like, eh. you know, they're just making off color jokes and trying to get a reaction. But yeah. when people feel threatened, I feel like I should be more empathetic about, oh yeah, somebody did actually threaten your life or horrible sexual assault or something like that. Um, yeah. I should be more empathetic to them. But at the same time, my gut reaction is to go like, eh, it's a, it's an online threat. It's on 4chan. It's not. Mm -hmm. it like no, it sometimes does. that stuff comes too, you know. Sometimes that, it does. Sometimes through, it does. Yeah. yeah. Try being a woman, maybe. Maybe. I get it all the time. Yeah. Every second of the day. No, that's scary. what I'm saying. I need more empathy when it comes to that. But I actually, actually, for the vlog this week, I recorded it, but I was wondering if I should put it in there. There's a sign at the Ostrom Bergstrom Airport. Ostrom. It's, <laughs> Ostrom. What's it? Ostrom. 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 I love the Ostrom Bergstrom. Ostrom Bergstrom. <laughs> Austin Bergstrom Air Airport. <laughs> I'm not gonna get through it. It's it's an airport. You can look it up. AUS. Uh, there's a sign that says um, we are at a heightened awareness of mm -hmm. or a heightened alert status for terrorist activity. Oh. So don't leave your bag sitting somewhere. This sign is a permanent sign yeah. that is affixed to the wall. And in fact, I know for a fact it's a new sign because the old sign got so faded in the sun that they had to replace it. It's like, okay, how can you be at a heightened awareness for a longer period of time than a sign can survive? <laughs> it's just like, are we really, or is it just like, hey, everything's dangerous now, everyone be scared well, all the time. Well, is that just permanent after 9-11? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It's just yeah. window yeah. dressing, that yeah. fucking facade of security. Have, have you been in many shared bathrooms? Like, whatever gender bathrooms? Oh, like non- yeah, like non-specific. I've been in the YouTube space has one. The the YouTube so event we just went to that hotel has like all of the bathrooms for like all the parties we went to. They were just communal. Yeah, which is great. I find it. It's, it's, I like that it's still in a window where I haven't done it many times in my life. It's I'm my heart like my heart rate goes up when I walk out of a cubicle and I see a woman. 
because oh, okay. I think I'm in the wrong bathroom. <laughs> and then I'm just like, oh no, it's just, it's a whatever gender bathroom. Yeah, that happens but to me at the Alamo sometimes. I, I can't shake that feeling every time. If I just forget where I am for a second, I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> it's okay, it's, it's cool. And everyone else has the same look. Like a girl looked at me and she was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I went to a, a bar recently and they did something that I really love. They had like the two bathrooms that you would normally have, but one says toilets and one says toilets and urinals. So it's not like men mm, and women. Mm -hmm. It's just like this one also Make has urinals. Oh, it, I like that. As a woman, do you dream of using your urinal? It'd be the best, right? It'd be complicated. Do, I mean, remember, they, they do. There's a scene for that in the Full Monty. Do you remember that near the beginning of the movie? I don't think I've seen that movie. There's a woman who uses a urinal. I feel like there would be a lot of um, equipment that she, I would need to make that happen. Does she like back into it? She kind of like, like like push her her hips forward a little bit, like lifts her dress up. Are you talking yeah. about just like lifting like my like urethra up? Yeah, like you just feel like like when you put your, <laughs> it's like when you put your thumb over a hose and make it spray harder. Spilt coffee That's on the my same dick. Same thing. That. That's heard the same look thing. Look Barbara, look. Literal spit take. <laughs> I'm on the beer now. <laughs> Is Try that coffee good? Have you tried it? Ha no. There you go. How do you know? Because I'm just going to piss all over my fucking leg. <laughs> you can try it. You do it in the shower. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard oh. people so try do it out, Try it in the woods first. Like, try it outdoors. Why don't then... I just try it in my own bathroom? Because I assume you don't want to clean it up if you make a mess. It's pee. Homeowner. Homeowner. That's me. <laughs> Homeowner. Uh-huh. <laughs> it sounds weird when you say it. Homeowner. <laughs> so, how often do you pee outside on your own property? Never. Ever? Never. <laughs> Come on, at Gavin. My, at, my, at my old house, I did occasionally. I have never done it. Steve-O did. He pissed in my backyard, and I was like, that's weird. <laughs> it's not weird. I've pissed in Gus's backyard. Steve-O. I pissed in the fulcrum night. I pissed in your backyard. Oh, oh right, right. Yeah. You had a screened-in porch. Yeah. <laughs> you say the fulcrum night as if that's like a typical night for you. No, it's a very specific no, it's like, night. It's, it's no, a legendary night. I'm saying, of course you're going to pee in Gus's yard because you're blackout drunk. Is that a normal thing? Yeah? Yeah. You gotta pee more when you're so, drunk. So... Did you pee through the screen? No. Oh. Barb, you'll appreciate this. The, he had a screened-in porch, which at about just over hip level, f down, was solid wood, just over hip <coughs> level, and up was all screen. Oh, no. And so hip I was talking you. with someone and peeing, like, below what I thought was <laughs> hip level privacy. <laughs> But clearly, anybody talking to me <laughs> could have looked down and seen me pissing. Maybe if their eyes were on their dick, they wouldn't have seen you. If they had a dick. Yeah. yeah. Oh. They didn't. So, you know what happens to me so... It was a super classy moment. <laughs> you know what happens to me so often, especially at bars? Wait, wait, wait. Let's all guess. What happens to Barbara at bars that happens all the time? Um, Men try to talk to you. People will give you drugs. I was just trying to be different. I know it's not about this. Barb goes into the bathroom, and girls want to be your best friend. Well, that yes, that does happen. Okay, but that wasn't where I was going. Girls are so friendly in bathrooms. It's the worst. Guys don't yeah. have that. We don't have that support mm -mm. network. No, they. Uh, you go into a girl's bathroom when you're drinking, and everyone will just compliment you. How hot you are, and like. Oh my god, I love your dress. Guys don't say a fucking word. No, I don't yeah. think I've ever uttered a word in a bathroom to someone I don't. Know. But what happens all the time when I go to bars? I always accidentally. <laughs> all right, let's play the game again. Wait, okay, okay, um, play this game again. I, I got it. I got it. You make eye contact with who? The what, through what? the the gap. This no. started with peeing. So <laughs> fumble, she, fumble a tampon. So you accidentally watch somebody pee that you don't intend to. Yeah, yeah is that I, right, guys? All the time when you're walking. I got it. When what? you're walking, when you're leaving the girls' bathroom or going into, and the guy's bathroom door swings open. For some reason, so many bars position the urinals right <laughs> oh, by the fucking our, door. Our sphere is like that. I'm the aware one, of it. Yeah. The one right outside stage five is like that. Yeah, you could be standing in our front door and watch someone piss. Yeah. I like unintentionally, but kind of intentionally, see so many dicks. Kind of With urine coming out. Well, because you're looking, yeah. Pervert. Yeah, but we already went over those with <clears throat> dick pics. You don't want to see a flaccid dick. I also don't want to see a flaccid dick pee. But you see, can't help but look, is what you're saying. Exactly, yeah. You'd be the worst guy because... There is plenty of opportunity in a men's bathroom to look at other dudes' Oh, dicks. no, I would be terrible. I hope it's okay to say this. It's in my head. I don't do it, but it's in my head. It's there. Go on. Like, if I just, like, lean and look, I can see it. I can see I can see the dick. Wait, so you're... I'm in, I'm in a urinal. I mean, I'm in a... So, standard procedure, eyes front. You don't think about this? You don't think about your own privacy when you're in a urinal, Gavin? I mean, I'm, I'm blocking it. So, But you're blocking because you're thinking about it. That's what I'm saying. It's just habit, though. So, wait... So you you turn your head? No, I'm saying it's in my head, 
that I could that I could look and see somebody else's dick, and that they could look and just, see mine. Just that you could, just that I could. That's it. You have the. Option. It's because you got that friend. Just, what? Oh, <laughs> I almost said his real name. What'd what I say in the? I don't remember. Bruce, I think that's what guy. I called him. Yeah. In the uh, RTA. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you've never done it. You've never taken yourself up on this offer. No, I don't think I ever have. I don't think I ever had the think weirdest thing that's ever happening in the bathroom was in Chicago. Oh, here I almost said Chicago. <laughs> you, no, no, you're not almost. You totally said. Did I say Chicago? Chicago? Yeah. Fuck, I've got the Gus. Oshkam Bershom. Oshkam Bershom. Oshkam Bershom Airport. Connected to Chicago Joe Hare. And uh, I was in Chicago <laughs> O'Hare Airport, and I I did the thing where you like, unfortunately, see through the crack in the stall, mm -hmm. and a guy was masturbating furiously. Oh God. Man. Furiously, I thought you were gonna say like, you caught a mid wipe, but that's way like, worse. He just found out he was dying in thirty minutes. That, I, <laughs> like that, that. that happened I to mean, me at San Diego Comic Con. Maybe he was. What you saw someone masturbating? No, Jeff saw me masturbating. <laughs> in a bathroom. No, no, I, I I saw someone masturbating in, uh, a bathroom in, in, in a bathroom the convention stall, center. In the convention center. <laughs> I, I've had two bad bathroom experiences. One time I was peeing. And some prick kicked me in the oh. ass, and I banged my penis against the urinal. I thought best, one of the best moments of my life. <laughs> oh, was he right. was so Gavin never actually gets mad. He was genuinely because well, his knob touched the urinal. We had hand sanitizer at the booth. <laughs> Did yeah. you have dick oh, sanitizer don't put that on your though? Dick. <laughs> don't put that in there. Wasn't best, please. The other time I was in, it was at a convention. I was in a stall that didn't have a lock, and I was doing a twosie. Mm -hmm. So I was just had one hand on it. Where's this? We. Convention. At, at a convention. Just yeah, like I think I would walk back to the hotel. Go ahead. Um, it, I was, it was before I was I could do that, and then a wheelchair. <laughs> before you could walk. <laughs> I was in. I had to like be at the booth. A wheelchair came crashing through oh, the God. door. Like I guess like he wheel he missed where he was wheeling himself, and he ended up like oh my God against my knees, and oh, I was no. pooing with a guy in a wheelchair did, against my did knees. Did he say he was wheelie sorry? <laughs> <laughs> were you taking a handy crap? I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, that went on my dick again. <laughs> I need. Oh my god. There you go, Barb. Um, the, I, thought, I thought you were going to tell the story about when some guy offered you cocaine in the, in the porta potty. No, like, offered it? him is not the right word. Oh, you no. did cocaine this? on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, he just came in and did it. Oh god, I blocked that one out. That's that my was father. Recent. Was that was like a year ago. Yeah, I think there's an animated adventure about that now. There might be. Oh, is there? I think it I don't think we have a guy doing drugs in an animated adventure, do we? Maybe I think not. so. We should start doing approvals on these. <laughs> <laughs> when I w so you talked about like the lock being broken on the bathroom stall. In my high school, the bathrooms had no stall doors. No doors. No doors. That was a normal thing. Yeah. How do you poo? It's fucking. Like a prison, you fucking take your dump and you look other people in the eyes. Take your dumps. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. High school was trying to take a dump in the morning and try to make sure you never had to take a dump at all what if you, what, during the day. What about the women's restroom? Uh, I don't know. I never Cuts. went into the women's restroom. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe you had she a almost outed you there. <laughs> I almost had a female friend in high school. <laughs> God no. Well, I just I would think like, oh, you get to high school and you're like, hey, does your bathroom have stall doors? I, I didn't have any friends. I didn't talk to anyone. The oh. only person I talked to was Frank, who's apparently a creative lead on Heroes and Half Wits. <laughs> Seriously, that came out of that meeting. That that Frank is the creative lead. Hmm. Like he oversees the post production for the show. Hmm. Does he? That I learned all of this. All of this was learned. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the the O'Hare Airport has something that I fucking hate, where all of the I don't know if the women's restrooms are like this, but I assume they are. All of the toilets have that seat cover on them. Oh yeah, and it's the automatic switch. Yeah, and it's like automatically it rotates out. You wave your hand over it, and it changes the toilet seat cover, so you're How never sitting on someone else's bum. It just looks like mushed up, crumpled plastic wrap that's all over the toilet, and you wave your hand, and it like rotates out, and like new plastic oh. wrap covers the toilet. Very but fancy. I think I read something that that's even dirtier than just using a plain toilet seat. Because it smears it around and... Yeah, like it. something about that plastic material is like, it, that's way worse. I don't care how clean the skin on my ass is. But what if someone like... But I gives love you the way Barbara thinks. Kiss on the bum. I love the way you think. Who gives a shit, right? Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. It's, it's, like, it's your ass. Yeah, I feel no, like what, I'm, what I'm, I'm kind of a your... germaphobe. I try to be very clean. Even I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. Like if they have like the toilet seat, I'm like, who cares? So, so many women are like, oh, I never sit on toilet seats. It's like... Why? So okay, so Sit say down. a guy gets all your kit off, he's touching you, would you be like, oh, my ass is dirty? <laughs> or would you let him do whatever I usually am not like sleeping with a guy right after using a public bathroom all the time. 
But even if Why I, is it a public bathroom? That's well, nasty. even if I mean, I. She said this before. She didn't give a shit. I don't give a shit. And well, like for the guy's sake, the guy is not going to be like. <laughs> yeah, but the, so you smell like toilet seat. The germs, though. The germs on him. Well, that's his problem. <laughs> they came off your ass. It's his problem. Listen, there's a lot more germs, probably where he's going. <laughs> a lot more germs where he's going. Classic. If you're lucky. Oh god. Classy. Um. So someone tweeted me something today. And I, I need your help remembering this. It was several years ago, but when did we decide that the term selfie was going to be obsolete oh. and that there was going to be new terms for it? Oh, I remember when we first talked about the term selfie. And how it wasn't going to last, right? And how I, I said, what do you call it when you take a photo <laughs> of yourself? And these two were like a self-portrait. And I said, have you ever heard the term selfie before? And do you know, it was Ashley who told me the term. Yeah, because mm -hmm. thought it was Australia. Right? I thought it was an Australian thing. And uh, you guys were like, a selfie's not a thing. No one's going to say selfie, you know? And now it's just like... And I thought but, it was like C-E-L-L-V because oh, it was a little phone. Oh, cell phone. I thought that's what you were saying. So stupid. And then we said that <laughs> in the future there would be like <clears throat> apps where you could take uh, photos with both cameras at the same time. You remember we had this conversation yeah. at one point. Apparently LG now makes a phone that can take a two feet. <laughs> Where it takes two photos at once. It takes a photo out of that camera and a photo out of the front. So it'll be camera. a nicely framed photo of something and a picture of someone's face going. Bleh. That that's existed for a while, hasn't it? I don't know. But I, I just saw an ad. A friend so, of mine took a picture of his face going like this, and then a close the other picture that was taken on the other side was a empty roll of toilet paper. Gross. At the same we have exact a time. Close friendship. Yeah. I don't know what makes me matter. Is the empty roll of toilet paper or someone who has a new roll of toilet paper and it's just sitting on top? Oh, that's what I do. The, I hate it's like the laziest there, thing on there, the planet. There are animals who work in the bungalow now. Animals? Because I see that all the time. Yeah. And I see toilet paper put on the roll the wrong way all the time. That's now. What's the wrong way? There is no wrong way. No, the What's wrong, the way, wrong is, way is it coming down the back? It's coming down the back. It's no, yeah. you mean under? Yes. Under is preferable. It needs to be over. Why over. under? You're a... This you is, own... You fucker. How are you, you so successful? If a cat comes up and goes like this, bop, 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 to the under, it just winds it around. Hey, guess what? We got no cats here. He's got cats! He, here, I said, here. Also... It's a universal thing! If here! A, if a cat just turns around, <laughs> then it's all gonna come down anyway. What do you mean, the cat? It does it from the other side. The other yeah, side. if he's like pressing his back against the wall and he's doing that. No cats are doing that. No cats done that. They're wedging up behind the like the <laughs> one inch behind it to do that. No. Well, so what if the cat gets up and then slides down the back of it with his? Not paw? happening. That, that can happen. Why don't you just like? Or what if the cat decides to scratch like this? The other one. <laughs> up. Then you're fucked, right? That would never happen. That was the best reason I've ever heard. It's like the GIF or GIF thing. It goes one way or the other. It's look, like standing up to wipe or sitting down to wipe. Look, Let's if not you even got, start that conversation. If you've got one of those hooks that where you is open on one end and you can just slot one on, yeah. that you should do. If it's one of those ones where you got to like de-hook it and mm -hmm. like thread a new bog roll through, I'm never going to do that. I'm just going <gasps> to plop it on the top. You Gavin, you're an animal. animal. Fucker. You're an animal. I mean, you're I'm, sitting there. Well, that I, it's fine though because I can just grab it and use it. I have a question for no, you. No, you're an animal. I have a question for you. No. Because apparently no. everyone does this differently. It's like the same thing with like standing or sitting to wipe. When you are pooing and you like take toilet paper, do you scrunch it or do you fold it? I'm not an animal, so I fold it. I fold it. Yeah. I make a swan. <laughs> <laughs> and then make it, you're a and then make it peck. <laughs> I'm, peck I'm somewhere in between. I don't scrunch it, but I also don't fold it. No. Right, totally why don't we, like, I kind of just like. Do we have bring any toilet paper here that we could all demonstrate our techniques with? Yeah, we should get a, a roll. So that we've talked about this before, but it came up where somebody had to wipe themselves on camera for a short, and it was clear how they oh, wiped yeah. themselves, which was very strange. To, we've talked about this. On yeah, the podcast. we've definitely talked about it before. So I think we've talked about wiping <laughs> way too much on this podcast. But I, it, I've it's... made an effort to try to sit to wipe now. Because <laughs> you would stand up before. Yeah, not completely. I would just like kind of like hover. Yeah. But still be at like the sitting position. So now you just wedge your hand down the back? Well, now I do like the tilt thing. I'm trying. I'm trying a new, new technique. Oh. This, he cares cats going crazy. Is that cat's not got its back to the wall or anything. <laughs> this is under. classic it's it's a stupid kitten. cat technique. Dude, team over for life. <laughs> my, my cats don't do that for some reason. I kind of like your cats. I don't want to like your cats, but I kind of like your cats. Do you keep your my doors closed to the bathroom? No, used to. Definitely keep the seats down because I don't want them walking around in the bog water, but... 
Yeah, it's fine. So Joe the Cat has developed this thing. I will put it in my Instagram story. He has developed this thing that I fucking hate. What's He's, your Instagram? Uh, just Bernie. <laughs> okay. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the um. He's got this thing that I can't stand where he, he thinks we have this connection, like, oh, this is our thing. I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. Where, when I wake up in the morning and I go to brush my teeth, he shows up on my counter and wants me to, like, turn the water on for so him so he can, can drink? drink right out of, out of the faucet. That's so cute. That's a really cute thing. Half the thing. Uh, fuck that. I'm well, not there to, like, first of all, it's very inefficient with water, which is uncool because the water runs for, like, 30 seconds while he goes, lick, lick. Well, it's no lick. worse than a shower. Well, that's, I have to shower. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is 30 seconds out of your tap is probably like four seconds of your shower. Hey, but it doesn't wasting, need to happen. You're wasting water by not peeing in the shower. Could you just turn on like a little trickle of water? That way it doesn't waste as much? It's, I do trick, do a little trickle. I'll, 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 I'll video for it. But it's just like, I don't like, but then it's like, now it's gotten to the point where it's like, I stir at like 6.30 in the morning. I do a little, and then Joe is there meowing. <laughs> For me to get up and start the water so he can fucking drink. Are you just not giving him enough water? He has water everywhere. Get him one of those like aerating things. Tried it, got on Amazon, bought some fucking water fountain. Someone can look it up, I'm sure. Is it a Peter Hayes thing? can make a gif out of it. It's a it's it looks like a little flower and it like <laughs> it's it's fresh water. Nah, not good enough for Joe the cat. Flower. Yeah. See if there's a All right, what do we got? What are we doing? What are <laughs> we doing right. with this? All right, I'll hold it up and you tell me you show me your technique. Oh, sorry. For you. Actually, I like the other way. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking hypocrite. Was, you I, fucking listen, hypocrite. It's all for part of the conversation. So I go like this, and then I go like that, and I go Modest like that, and then I'm good to go. Okay. That's it, right, Gus? Yeah. yeah. See, like I'm a civilized person. Good I'm good. very similar, but I don't like feeling too much information on my anus. So I go for a much thinner, so I'll, I'll probably go like, and I'll get Gus, the, I'll he, get went, the start he went the five fold. sheets, by the way, which is I was actually easy. trying to get four, but five came off. And so on the last fold, I'll just sort of like, Curl it so it's fat and thin, <laughs> and that way, that way is a, there's enough time. blocker. That's not enough surface area. And then I just go like, whoop. yeah, I'm nervous about that lack of surface area. There. Look at the surface area. I I've never had this. an incident. See, I don't know Covers. why, because your anus is very small. Your anus is very small. I have ambition. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is you. Okay, I have to. I have to put myself in this situation. I never hit the edges of my. Fold. Oh yeah, I do like a scrunch fold. I do that. Okay. Wait, wait. Sorry, you did that too fast. That's to totally that. a scrunch. I go like this. So Barbara is taking four sheets and then she scrunches her hand. Scrunch. Like she's throwing away a about, notebook paper. Now what I'm worried about there is if you have a gap, you're gonna miss a bit. I also have a sense hole. of where my hand skin is and where my toilet paper is. Like I'm not like, what? Uh, and then if even if I do get something on my hand, yeah, there's something called the faucet. There you go. <laughs> and see, once again, I love Barbara. Who give? I mean, it's gonna happen, Who right? Who gives a shit? Literally. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Do so, you ever pay attention if it's textured side out or not textured never, side out? No, no, never. Oh, God. I started paying attention to it recently. Now yeah. you're gonna put that in my fucking head, dude. So you want bumps Why or divots? Why would you do that? Bumps are better. Texture bumps. side out is better. Well, what's the difference <laughs> in the two sides? It's, it makes a difference. Watch, fold it back the other way. Now you'll know there's a difference. Fuck you, Gus. You ruined. <laughs> when you feel it on oh, your God. asshole, it's totally different. By you the way, everything. For oh. me. Well, I mean, the the bigger difference is the brand. But it makes you think that that's why they. Make it that way, because every tooth, every tooth, every toilet paper brand is like that, where they have one side that's rough and then the other side that's not. Well, so it's both sides rough. One is concave rough. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, one by stretching, you get both sides. Oh yeah, it's totally different. Oh wow. Yeah, you've never thought about that before. Well, god damn it. So See, now you I would, I would want bumps because the the last thing I want when it comes to bog roll is bog roll that's too slick. Like I don't ever want to be like. Bloody hell, and like come off too fast. Jesus, what's like, going on down there? How like, are you wiping yourself? Are you yourself? on the floor in the corner suddenly? <laughs> like, you can't figure out what happened. People Just like, like a dog the next scooting day. your ass on the fucking rug. Because some people have the little butt crumbs on the back, and I never want to have that. I spend no time thinking about this. This is the most I've thought about it. Why don't you get in wet wipes? Life. Well, wet wipes run out. Toilet paper runs out. Yeah, but I've always no, got. Toilet paper's forever. Oh, you that have that. That is not you have that. logic. It doesn't run out for me. That's not logic. <laughs> you can buy. Wet wipes. I don't use something that runs out. So wet wipes are not. Apparently, there's a huge dispute between plumbers and sewage. They seem professionals. awful for the environment. Oh, th apparently they've pulled out these wads of flushable wipes that have been multiple tons. Yeah, <laughs> like these huge, like massive conglomerations of these things. So they have like. <laughs> <gel on them. laughs> 
Oh, before we get too far away from it, you're talking about the uh, Chicago. Why are we? We're all on toilets this time. Chicago O'Hare has the uh, pot of humor. the protective yeah. layer that rotates around. Amir Blumenfeld years ago, before Blonde, uh, before Vine, made a super short YouTube video where he was in <laughs> Chicago O'Hare, Blime. and he was using it. It's called the Chicago. Oh wait, maybe this isn't. I thought this was Amir Blumenfeld. Let me let me play it and see. We'll recognize his voice for this. I didn't. And I'll show. So I'll show it to you guys. Uh, Jake and Amir. Come on, you don't know who Jake and Amir is? Oh, Amir yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, this is it. Hey, this is a toilet at Chicago Airport. You wave your hand in front of the sensor. You okay. wait for the fresh circles to come around, and now you're ready to use it. Let me test it out right here. I'm going to wave my hand. And now you can see that indicator thing going all the way around. It's so stupid. And now I'm ready to take a huge shit. Hey, I got a little kid here with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> he got called out. He got called out for making a video in a bathroom stall, and some parent was like, "Hey, dude, I got a little kid with you." <laughs> wow, I love that. I oh, love that. And oh you can tell he even shut off the video before the guy finished because he was so just like probably traumatized. Probably because he went, "I'm ready to take a huge oh. shit." <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. I don't know where I saw that posted for the first I've time. I've never seen a toilet that does that. It's I've only seen that ever at the Chicago airport. I think that would just encourage people to take dumps on the seat <laughs> and send them around like a sushi video carousel. People I think yeah, I've seen, oh, yeah? I've seen those videos too. Yeah, this is really not how people work. <laughs> oh, oh, this toilet has plastic wrap on it. Better take a shit I've on seen, it. I've, we've I've seen, seen it. I've seen it. Well, I'm yeah. telling you, Bar, we've seen I that. I also feel like whenever... there's videos of that. Whenever there's a new technology, I, I immediately think, how could I mess with this? Like, how-, how I'm gonna I not... take a dump on it! Well, I wouldn't do it myself, It is surprising but... the number of people who will, like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> in a random place. I don't think I've ever, like, I can count maybe on one hand when I was in a dire situation where I was camping in the middle of nowhere, where I didn't take a shit in a toilet. What did you poo? Like, in the woods? I'm trying to- I can't even recall a time. Can you dig a hole? Like, I guess when I was camping in the middle of the army, I'm, I'm like making stuff up. I like have to, there's no clear memory of doing that. But there's people who are just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just shit in the corner here and just like, or grab it and throw it on the walls and stuff. It's like, <laughs> what is that? What is that? Animals. That's that's a part of your brain that's <laughs> missing. I think it's just some people think poo is inappropriate when you do it in front of someone and some people don't. And that's the only thing. Like, I, I, It's like, like a dog, right? Like a dog doesn't give a fuck if you watch it yeah. take a dump. It's like. That per th those people are like a dog, just like looking you in the eyes and taking a huge dump. I, I know a friend who went on this like lads weekend with some mentalists, <laughs> and one of them <laughs> with a mentalist. <laughs> one of them shit down the shower curtain because he thought it was funny <laughs> in the place of staying. And I was like, "That's repulsive," and I'm really glad I wasn't there. And now I don't like that person. Yeah, I wouldn't the like them fuck? either. That's fucked up. That's where you go to get clean. He wiped his ass on the shower curtain. Ugh. Nope. Nope. Like I was very offended by the RTAA. Where Joel was in the shower, and I came in the, and I pissed in the <laughs> toilet, and he said he as if he needed to make the story worse. He said that I came in and pooped. I was like, "That's ridiculous! How <laughs> dare you say that?" I mean, I didn't do the thing where I wiped away the fog on the glass because that was funny, but I wouldn't poop in the room with somebody else there. That's yeah. crazy. That's you, crazy. You even I will say in your defense, you even have admitted in the past when you're in a hotel room, you'll leave the hotel room to take a dump in the lobby. I do. No, not the lobby. Very specifically, the second floor. The With second like the floor, conference right. level. Oh, the yeah. mezzanine. <laughs> Big secret for hotels, you go to the you go to the second floor, it's where all the, the conference rooms are. And if you go there in the middle of the night, the bathroom's wide ball by itself. Super clean, nobody's go there. Go fucking nuts, dude. Yeah. In fact, I went to a hotel just recently in New York. No, San Francisco. Oops. <laughs> I went to, to a hotel there <clears throat> at like one in the morning. I went down to the second floor. And I was like on the conference level, and I was like, "Yeah, cool." And I said, "There's the men's room." Went to open it, it was locked. I was like, ah, you motherfuckers! What'd you do? Um, held it in. I assume we went to the lobby. I just pooped in the hallway. <laughs> 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 Found a nice corner and just fucking. Because you thought it was it. funny. No, I, I I forget what I did. I think I did just went up to the room. And Have, has there room. been a time in your life where you've seen in a public restroom like a shit so big <sighs> that you just you you don't know who what human ass. Have I shown you the photo? Have I shown you the photo? Oh God! See, this is it. See, I went to college with guys who will what send you, you photos of their poop. Is so. it yours? This isn't my poop. But I'm like physically. 
How are you gonna find? Do you have it favorited? I re I remember approximately what date it occurred, and it's sorted by date. You, so you have a picture of poop on your phone. I have. You'll see. <laughs> I I'd rather not. I'll look at it. Okay. It's gonna take me a while to find it. So you might have to vamp. What? I hope it'll take a long time. <laughs> Do you, you don't have it tagged. No, you're right. I should tag it. <laughs> I think Make it a market as a favorite. favorite. Yeah. I think yeah. the golden rule. Oh, you get to show this to Barbara. Barbara can't wait to see Gus this. is handing Barbara his phone. Oh no. What's what's going on in that picture? I don't know. Like this was at a public restroom in Sydney. It's all up on the side. And the uh, the door to the stall. I needed to take a piss. Uh. But the door to the stall was open. I walked past the stall, stopped, turned around, and went back because the well, the image was so appalling. <laughs> 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 That's horrifying. Uh, how far into the podcast? We're 40 minutes of the podcast. <laughs> we haven't left the bathroom yet. What, what's going on, guys? What's the, going golden, on? the golden rule should be <laughs> if poo <laughs> is coming out of your anus, you're not funny at that moment. No and you golden, can't be funny. There's no golden rule. Uh, anyone in the uh, broadcast channel, <laughs> if you have a, a bad gag reflex, minimize Slack right now. Oh, are you, put, are you giving it no, to do, them? I'm just, for your reference, do not put it in the show. Why don't you why don't you cut it out of the image so it's just white? Yeah, you you can uh <laughs> blur it out or something just don't so you have an idea it. of what the hell we're talking I about. <laughs> I once walked in on a girl uh in a stall because she didn't lock the door, which is by the way one of my pet peeves. <laughs> yeah, I hate when people do that too. Cuz then you feel like the bad guy. Yeah. Is everyone just seeing it now for the first yeah. time? <laughs> it landed in the control room. <laughs> um and so I opened the door on this girl. <laughs> this audible groan. Should I wait for a second? <laughs> you're good. Sorry. No, you're good. I, it's justified. I open the stall door, and there's this girl who has her legs open, and her head's like this. Like, looking between her legs. Like, she's watching? Like, uh, maybe? Well, she passed out? No, she was, because then she popped her head up when I opened the door. <laughs> Peter Hayes made a gift of the, the fountain. Of course <laughs> gotta, he did. You gotta retweet that. Of Unbelievable. course. Unbelievable, that guy's Johnny on the spot, dude. I'm sorry, so she was, what was she doing between her legs? Looking. I don't know. But I just, I felt so bad, because you walk in on someone who didn't lock the door, and it's your fault all of a sudden. It's your fault. Maybe she was looking at... Maybe she was just inspe inspecting so her saying, genitals, maybe, which is a healthy thing to do. Maybe Joe the cat has health problems. I agree with that. I was worried about it, so we took him to the vet to see if the drinking thing was a problem. And Does no, he have a drinking not, problem? No, he doesn't have a kidney problem. Is there an attachment for your tap that would let you control it from an app? <laughs> I don't know about that. Because then you could just roll over, hit snooze, and then the tap would come on for like... 30 seconds. That's your solution. So then, like, Joe the Cat will be trained to go wake Bernie up and then run haul ass to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here, let me read this thing right here. <clears throat> Want to remind everyone, this episode of Receive Podcast is brought to you by Casper. <laughs> Casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost. Casper is revolutionizing the mattress industry by cutting the cost of dealing with resellers and showrooms and passing that savings directly to the consumer. Casper's mattress is an obsessively engineered mattress at a very fair price. Casper's made of supported memory foam for a sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. Plus, its breathable design sleeps cool to help you regulate your temperature through the night, uh, which, of course, is very important in Austin where it's hot as fuck in the middle of the night. Uh, you can buy it easily online, completely risk-free. Casper understands the importance of truly trying out a mattress that in all reality you spend a third of your life on. Casper offers free delivery, painless returns with a 100-day period so you don't have to lie down in a showroom. You can save an additional $50 towards a mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash RT, entering promo code RT. That's casper.com slash RT, promo code RT. Terms and conditions apply, free shipping and returns to the U.S. and Canada. Casper is definitely one of the things that people here at Rich Teeth ask me the most about, I think. It's a great mattress. You should absolutely try it out. Can I get one? Right there, casper.com slash RT, code RT. <laughs> you get $50 off? You can tell them Gus sent you. All right. I love my Casper. It's amazing. The great thing I, I like about it is that I always sleep on the same side of my bed no matter what, mm -hmm. even though I live alone. And it doesn't sink in. Yeah. Like, it doesn't leave a person mark like my other mattress did. I also like that it's very stable. So, like, if I toss or turn or if my wife tosses and turn, like, it doesn't really affect the other person very much. Yeah. Like, like my old mattress was a fucking nightmare with that shit. But, but not this one. Not Casper. <laughs> Great. Have you... um? Gavin, have you or Barbara, have you played any uh player Thanks. unknown battlegrounds? No. Yes. Have you? No. <laughs> Why did you say yes? Why did you say yes? What happened? Yes. I just wanted to be included. 
It's fucking great. It is. I, it's fucking great. I just started playing it yesterday. Have you guys not done Achievement Hunter Let's Plays in Battlegrounds yet? Oh, they did, yeah. Okay, okay. No. It's fucking awesome. It's so much. It's like everything that I liked about DayZ, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> it works. I've mm -hmm. seen some mm -hmm. very funny clips from it. It yeah, looks like, like a game where funny stuff can happen. It's PC. PC. I've, I've only it's played like, on PC. I actually it's, just talked to Adam Baird and uh, Ellis about building a PC for me. We should, we should play. Yeah. We, we, I was talking about totally do that. Basically doing like a you podcast. Totally Let's play with it. It's like, it's like the oh, Hunger can I Games. Play? Can you do a podcast? Yeah. Let's play with people who are on the podcast. Yeah. I, I feel bad stealing you to do it, though, because you do Let's Plays during the day. Mm. Are you saying that it's like too samey? Or it's like, I don't want to keep you from doing an Achievement Hunter Let's Play to come do a podcast Let's Play. Does that make sense? Nah, that's Look, fine. content is content. Okay, good. Good to know. But it's like, it's kind of like the Hunger Games, right? It's like a plane flies over an island and a hundred players drop out. You got nothing. So it's like you land and you've got to find weapons and you've got to kill all the other players. Do you like that the weapons are you can pretty much run into a building and find something? It's great. Find something okay. to get yeah. by. Like you're not it's gonna not find always somebody, the best. somebody gets a sniper rifle and somebody gets a machete. It's usually you get something. Yeah, you get like a pistol or, yeah. or something. You fight with something. Right. And uh then it's just like a matter of staying alive as long as you can. And then as the game goes on, it's the, Hunger Games. the playable area <clears throat> gets smaller and smaller. Oh, so it's wow. like oh, you're nice. forced to get into an area where everyone else is. It's oh, great. Like, like a bunch like of rats. Yeah. What's it called again? Remember? Uh, Player Unknown's Battleground. I've been playing a game I think that you would like a lot, uh, Gus. Did you like Don't Starve? I love Don't Starve. Oh, then I got a game you should play. It's called Wild 8. Have I've heard played? of that. Uh -uh. It's an Alaskan survival game. It's early access. <clears throat> we need a term now that means I've played all my early access games to the point <clears throat> where they need to be updated for me to play them again. Like, yeah. I'm waiting seven days to die. I'm waiting for them to patch it because I've done everything in seven days to I'm, die. I'm that way with Astroneer. Yeah, and you're just waiting for them to patch it so you can have something new to do in the game. And I, I'm like that with, like, five games at this point. The game I'm playing right now that I just can't get enough of is Prey. Prey. It, it's, it's the first game since... Is it Prey or Prey? Prey. It's the first game since Portal 2. Where I just want to walk around and look at things. I just like, I love being in that world. I, I felt like I really liked that game early on, but as time has gone on, like I'm starting to get, it's starting to wear on me a little bit. Oh, is it, I, I'm not, I'm not that far in. I'm I think like I got five like, hours in. I, I, I'm around there, maybe five or, no, I'm probably like six I've just seven picked hours. up the, uh, the mental stuff. Okay. I can be a coffee cup now. <laughs> that, that's a really great power because it makes me realize how ridiculous it was early in the game where they're like, just hide as best as you can in this room. And they're like, see, hiding behind a chair. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> oh, it's funny. I gotta play it because my kids, when I watch them play it, they're like, "No, no, don't watch. They'll spoil it for you." It's... I'm I'm playing on PC, yeah. and I have Dan next to me. He's playing on Xbox, so I'm on like 4K on my PC, and he's on. It's uh, it's so different. It's just in the better. Way it works. It's like it's way better on PC, and I hate saying that. No, mm, Rainbow PC. Six is way better on but... PC than it is on <laughs> Xbox. Where the, God, where are the point where like? Those games can barely keep up on console. They can barely it looked, keep up. It was like 30 FPS, super strobey because they add the motion blur, but yeah. motion blur on a low frame rate just makes me yeah. want to vomit. Motion blur on 60 FPS is fine. When they announced Scorpio, I thought it was too soon. Now I think it's it's good timing. Yeah, yeah. They, need, be a, they need a way better <laughs> console out there. They just need up. They need like what the N64 did with the expansion pack. They just need that. You need God like no. a module. God no. They need garbage. a module where you just every year you get one for cheap. And you just slop it in, and now all of a sudden your console's better. Yeah, but it's like 50 bucks. Yeah, no. That's not, no? That's going to work today. I mean, but you think you'd you rather slop wait? a GPU in? I mean, yeah, but then people would be like, oh, well, to play this game, you need the latest version of the stupid X chip. And then, oh, they can right, only sell it to people who have that. It's either that or wait four years for the next console. Right. They, they'd much rather do that. Yeah? Yeah, that's you what they're doing already. You wouldn't pay like 50 bucks to have your Xbox run no, twice me, as fast? I would. But I'm saying a developer won't make a game like that because they know that their market that they can sell to is extremely small. Mm. You're a small mm. market. I am a small market. Yeah, I'm that. one person. I can only buy so many games. I'm also basically describing a PC. <laughs> so I'm gonna get on this plane and I'm drunk. Luckily, Ashley's gonna drive me to the airport. <laughs> but I got on a plane. Um, ugh, I was I was I was coming to Austin. I was coming coming back from LA, and a guy was. It was fucking. I texted. Gus. You were texting me. Yeah. It was six thirty in the morning, <clears throat> and we were flying out of LA, and. I was I was lucky enough to be upgraded to first class where they give you basically whatever you want to drink. And they said, do you want anything? I said, do I want orange juice or do I want water? I said, I'll take a water. I don't want orange juice. I want to sleep. So I'll take an orange. I'll take a water. Apple juice? Because orange juice keeps you up? No, it's just like calories I don't need. 
I don't like to, I don't like to take in calories and then fall asleep. But vitamin C is good for you. That's what sumo sumo wrestlers do. Sumo. <laughs> I'm having trouble here. The sumo wrestlers. <laughs> sumo wrestlers. But this dude next to me goes, um, orange juice. That sounds good. I'll have a uh, screwdriver. I'll have a vodka and orange juice. Six thirty in the morning. You don't know that guy might have been flying international. So I talked to the guy. He, he actually, I should say this. He, I didn't talk to him. He turned to me and explained himself to oh, me. Did he, he work night? He said my flight was bumped last night. So I ended up drinking all night. And so this is kind of a hair of the dog thing. I, I think it's fine. I don't think I was going to find the manifest from my flight. Dude had four screwdrivers and then started drinking beer. It's a two-hour flight. Drank probably three <laughs> or four beers and was totally lucid. I would have been like in the – I would have been the dude who dumps over the drink cart and pees on it like that guy. Oh, Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it wasn't Gerard Depardieu. No, he what? pooped. <laughs> <laughs> you think about you, you? You're slandering Gerard. Depardieu. I'm looking him up. Gerard it was Depardieu. somebody else. Some it was some famous person who dumped over a drink cart and pooped. <laughs> Gerard Depardieu on pees in plain aisle on a your flight. No, like when, wherever you see a drink cart. Uh, it was Gerard Depardieu. Gerard Depardieu relieves himself in plain cabin. <laughs> oh. Fucking slandering Gerard Depardieu. He fucking did it himself. But he didn't. Yeah. Do, he didn't do the poop. It was a disaster on a plane. You think I don't know about it? All right, you're good. You're good. I stand corrected. Yeah, but this guy was like, this guy was serious fucking business. This but guy was he was, coherent or like what was up with him? He was totally fine. I was <laughs> less coherent just being tired. And he was using the entire bottle of vodka? Yeah, they just kept, no, he they was taking a kept, sip and throw it away. They just kept bringing him stuff. Some people like only <laughs> pour a little bit into their fucking orange juice. <laughs> then you Fuck had four you. of them? I mean, that make sense. She just asked you, the guy who oh pissed on the drink cart Fuck was on you, a you piece of shit. If you get a glass of orange juice and you pour a little bit of vodka into that and drink it, you get another you glass said, of orange juice. He, had, he said four screwdrivers. That could mean four glasses of orange juice with vodka in it. This guy was pounding drinks, dude. He was pounding. Hey, look, I'm gonna have two beers right now. That's different because it's <laughs> in a fucking bottle. So I did always. So is the vodka. I, he, did, I did a shit I called. have a cup. <laughs> we need the uh, the argument. Cup. Oh, do it. I have do a it. fucking cup. If there's I don't think orange this combination juice in here, has happened on argument. Someone, cup. there's orange juice. I put a little bit of vodka in here. I make a screwdriver. I drink it. Oh, there's still a little bit of vodka left in this bottle. Let me get. Another glass of orange juice and put some more vodka in here and drink another one. Same what? bottle, right? Just how, like this. How many Same bottle. How many screwdrivers is that? It's one. It's the bottle is one. Is no. the bottle one or is the cup one? The bottle. The bottle of alcohol because it's pre-measured. That is your drink. That is one drink. If you say, what if you, like if you say to the flight attendant, I would like one, one vodka, one vodka soda, they don't give you like half of a bottle. They give you the bottle. That's one vodka. To pour in at your leisure. You're Otherwise, in the they would screen, mix Barb. it. You're in the split screen. I realize amp it, amp that. It up. <laughs> amp it up. Otherwise, they give you the fucking bottle so you could pour it yourself. Otherwise, right. they and would just one. mix it for you. And that's one. They would just mix it for you. Yeah, Why you fucking so Mexican. <laughs> there you go. I helped you out there, Barb. <laughs> Thank you. Our, right. our Canadian brethren and our Mexican brethren were just like, you need to like amp it up a little bit. Oh, I killed the mood with my racist shit. You did. Sorry. <laughs> to go, get, a few drink, get a few drinks in you and the fucking, yeah. the truth comes out. Back I'm to sorry. being offensive. Brian's right, yeah. still drinking his one beer. I, I was trying to help and I only ruined things for everybody. Ruined I was on it. Always Open. Uh, it'll be this it's week. Coming it's coming out this week, yeah. If Texas ever offers to make you one of his specialty drinks, don't fucking do it. No, definitely well, do it. Well, he made us booze last time. Oh my God. See, he would use two of those little bottles for one of those drinks and that would still be called one drink. That, is called, that said, is called a double. I said, what oh. do you recommend? No, she's got a point there, though. What? Well, because a double's one drink. A double's two. That's why it's a double. It's a drink. It's a drink, but it's two. But you wouldn't order two drinks separately if you wanted a double. Some places you, you do. Want Some places they serve you the one and they give you the second and the side and you have to put it in yourself. But you wouldn't get two mixes with it. No, because it's a double. Because it's one drink. Because it's two drinks. Because it's two <laughs> different servings of alcohol. This is now labeled the NAFTA podcast. <laughs> Canada versus Mexico. Well, fucking the UK is over here now for some goddamn reason. Mm. Mm -mm. Do you think we can make fun of Barbara for being Canadian more so than we can make fun of you for being Mexican? Like, it's more acceptable to make fun of Barbara for being a Canuck. I think so. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, all the, all the stereotypes about Mexicans are super negative. And what's positive about Canadians? Well, they're not, they're not like derogatory, other than like you have a, a funny accent. True. Well, that's still kind of being. Did it ever make it on air when you got when you were being all fussy and I called you a canunt? Yes, <laughs> <I> was <it>. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was like even you were like, don't do that. That was great. No, I like that. That's really funny. See now I, that's listen, not I'm, an insult anymore. I'm on Barbara's side. I'm on Barbara's side. Thank you, Bernie. Barbara's team. Barbara. Team Barbara. I had a weird thing happen to me this week. I was filming with Dan. Doing some slomes. That is weird. In the back garden. Some shlomos. Um, 
we were just like between videos setting up for the next one and uh he just took he did this like weird move where he was like and then he was like that was weird i was like what what happened and he, he was like i just had the sudden urge to hug you and i had to stop myself <laughs> and i was like Go ahead. what what are you talking about he's like i was about to walk up to you and hug you and i don't know why and i was like has that ever happened before he's like never happened to me before it was weird what? Has that ever happened have to you? Have you guys ever ha hugged? Have you ever no, hugged? No, we're not huggers. What? Yeah. How long have you known Dan? 12 years? I've what? hugged you. Oh, yeah, we've hugged. You yeah. and I have never hugged. Let oh. me think about that. Can we make this Can happen? Can we make it happen I've live? I've known you almost 20 years. On the podcast? Have we never hugged? We've never hugged. I got criticized this weekend for being a one-armed hugger. By who? You gave me a two-armed hug. I gave you a two-armed hug. That was a legitimate moment, though. Yeah. Well, oh. What is going on here? This is nice. I don't, have we never hugged? We've never hugged. Hug. hug. You're the perfect no. height, hug. too. You hug. can hug each other really well. It's going to be like, like that a, scene from Pacific Rim. Penis level. Sounds like an extra life stretch goal. Go. We'll save it for Who extra life. Who have you hugged? Oh, have you hugged uh, Jeff? I'm sure you have. Drunkenly? I don't know. At, at, it, at his Barbara wedding? or Gavin, you've worked really close you. with you. have? Oh, yeah. Back when I was a fan. Mm. Oh. I've, I mean, I've wrestled. Because I think I hugged you one time. So and then I knew not to do it again. We've yeah. had horizontal hugs. Oh, that sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> God, we wrestled one one time in London. Like we yeah, got really drunk and wrestled. You. And then yeah, the next morning I had to fly out. I was like heated in the bathroom, and I was like, "Why the fuck am I so sore?" Like looking at my back in the mirror, like I'm bruised to shit. I'm really sore right now because we got a trampoline for a video, and it's the most fun ever. I'm such a child. I can't. I cannot stop going out into my backyard and just bouncing around on my trampoline. Man, and I ache all over from it. I was reading. So the the Daily Mail posted your video with the trampoline and the mouse traps. Slow news day. Did they link to you or did they? Like they did link to the video. Thank. They God. did show a lot of screenshots, but they did link to the video as well. And the I comments a... on that were <laughs> fucking awful. I had to text Gavin. I was like, I don't know how you can live with this. Like people just saying like, do you have too much time on your hands? Or they don't understand why you have to use a fan. I'm like a GoPro could have done the same job. Yeah. Or why did someone have to jump on it? You could have had the same effect by throwing a golf ball on all of them. It's like, what the fuck are all of these <laughs> armchair commenters doing yeah. here? The, if the, I would have uh, done it. The too much free would. time one is, is my favorite, though. I know. As I'm, like, desperately trying to squeeze that video in between another one and coming to work as well. Yep. Coming off a tour in a movie. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nuts. You know, the, the thing, too, is, like, it really drives me crazy about traditional media is that <clears throat> I don't think there's ever been an article about Slow Mo Guys or about Rooster Teeth or any of our associated shows where I can read the article in its entirety and they spelled everything right or they got all the facts correct. Oh, yeah. And at this point, Gus, I think it's got to be fucking intentional. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm when you. we report on stuff, you know, or we put stuff in a documentary, we don't get everything fucking wrong. And they, they constantly spell Slow Mo Guys wrong. I think you guys were on ESPN and they said, oh, here's, uh, here's the Slow Mo Guy. Jumping yeah, on the mousetrap. Yeah. I think yeah. like, you said a slow mo guy or the slow mo the guy. The slow mo guy. See, that's more acceptable to me. And even dropping the W, that's acceptable. A lot of the times, we just get called the slow mo brothers, and that's <laughs> that's, that's not written anywhere. The no. slow mo guy. Yep. Are they confusing Warner <laughs> the Brothers? The slow mo guy. And that's even te it's not a, it's not it's a host accurate. saying it. It's uh, it's somebody typed it out. They had to get it fucking wrong. They had to get it wrong. And it's always a little bit wrong. It's not completely wrong. It's just a little bit wrong. Like, oh, they have this popular web series called Red and Blues. It's like, no, yeah. it's not. It Get it fucking right. They'll spell no. Dan's name wrong. Every time. He'll be Dan Crunchy. Every fucking time. I don't know if I should bring this up on the podcast or not. What? Do it. Gus will know what I'm talking about. So a fan sent us a package. Mm, I know what you're talking about. <clears throat> and it had um, folders and binders for each founding father at the company and it had like a letter to each of them and some like stuff about them in each binder literally not one person's name was spelled right uh i know the letter you're talking about yeah like yeah. no one it, i think it was like salora mm -hmm. was you yeah but Matt that's not, Halem. Uh, not public Halem. Though, yeah you were bernie bernie with an e i'm sure but there was a lot of work put in it oh All right. and like the the package delivery was to me because i think they wanted me to distribute it to people and my name on the package was spelt right, but inside it says, hello, Ms. Dunkelman, and that's spelt wrong, and, like, everything. Maybe they're just dyslexic. Maybe, but it's but just, like, if you're. that person probably doesn't work for a major news network. Yeah, it's I'm not gonna public. guess. It's totally. Right. Gonna hazard a guess, you know? 
It's like I, I, I just don't know how they con they don't get other stuff wrong. Like they don't misspell the name of it's like the press secretary for the White House. You know, not that we can do that. Like but you know what I mean? It's like it's, if they report on stuff, it's fucking right. It's, Whenever they report on web stuff, it's always fucking wrong. It's like that conspiracy theory I had where I was convinced Jimmy Kimmel was trying to undermine internet video. By making fake viral videos. Yeah. Remember he went on that stretch doing that? It's like, if he keeps making these videos, then everyone's going to think that no video on the internet is real. That it's all staged yeah. and it's yeah. all fake and made by someone else. Same thing. I just feel like <clears throat> if if I'm going to be applying for a job or, or talking to a company about wanting to work for them, I would take the time to maybe spell their names right. Maybe. Maybe get it right. Maybe get, or, or, or if you work in journalism and you're going to report on something, Fact maybe check. get some of those things right. Yeah. Don't misquote everything, which it's I can understand misquote because it might be paraphrasing, but misspelling people's fucking names and the names of shows, it's like, why did you take time out of your fucking day to write this article <laughs> if you're not going to get anything fucking right? Or what was it? There was That's why ESPN had to lay off a hundred on-screen talent in one day. There was that... they're going out of business and dying, you fucking cunts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there was that one the other day that said that uh, drunk gamers only reviewed one game ever and that Matt Hullum and Joel Heyman were contributing writers for it. <laughs> Does it like, make sense? No, I mean, Drunk Gamers was the site. <laughs> we knew Matt and Joel back then, but it's different circles. And we tell that story a lot about like the different circles. It's almost different right. Groups of people coming together. But it's like that was like just before. Yeah. Just I can understand like getting like guys stories a little bit wrong, like they're getting retold. But like just misspelling stuff or it's the name of Gavin's channel is the slow-mo guys. It's like and he calls it the slow-mo guy. And it's just it's ever so slight. It's just we don't give a shit by one letter. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's that's it. But they'll put it on their fucking network because it's content that people want to watch. Mm -hmm. I also got called Liam once. Liam, Liam? And, Liam and Dan. From the <laughs> I can see you being Didn't a Liam. Didn't you do an interview once where Dan someone looks called like you? Liam. Yeah. Someone called you like it was like you and Jeff. It was an interview at PAX. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no, yeah, so no, they called. Did they, they, they called call me Fred? They called you Fred. Fred. They said yeah. Bernie, Jeff, it, and Fred. And I thought I it was fucking Gus lost and Fred. it on the guy. <laughs> they fucking lost it on the guy. I had a a great uncle named Fred. <laughs> Maybe that's where he got it from. Yeah, Fred yeah. Sarola. No, Fred Flintstone. No, one of the other names, Medina, I think. <laughs> one of the other Mexican names. <laughs> I mean, like one of the other family <laughs> names. Technically, one of the other Spanish names I would go with. <laughs> there you go. Um, are there some Spanish names that are only Mexican and aren't oh, that's a good seen question. anywhere in Spain? I don't know. I've never thought about that. I don't know. Patrick, any idea? <laughs> uh, deafening silence. Yeah, he has no clue either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And there's a ton of first names, like even though, because you always associate the UK and the US as like, we're the same language. We just split apart. We live very far apart. But there are some first names that are so American. Like what? Like Brett or something. Or Chad. What about Tyler? I'm, yeah, all those. I, yeah. I've never heard Chet. those. Chet. Chet. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Isn't it. Chet yeah. supposed to be short for something? Chester. Is it? I think so. I, Chet. When was the last time you heard of Chester? I don't think I know any Chesterfield? Chesters. Isn't Chet Chester? Chet is a masculine given name, often a nickname for Chester, which means fortress or camp. Mm. It is an uncommon name of English origin. Oh. Yeah. It's just they've, they've all died out, I guess. Mm-hmm. Give me, another, give me another beer. I, I'm not. I'm not flying this plane. I had, I had a thing happen the other day. I, I'm curious how each of you would have reacted in this situation. <coughs> so, I was on a phone call, and I was also going to the grocery store. So I pulled into my local grocery store, and I parked. Not a very big grocery store. Uh -huh. So I parked, finished my phone call. Probably took me two minutes to finish my phone. Were call. your lights still on? Not relevant to the story, but thank you for asking okay. for details. I was Let's I say assumed yes. it was going to be someone waiting for your spot or something and getting angry. With you. Oh, you're close. You're okay. close. Very empty parking lot. And so I was aware of someone standing in the parking lot and watching me. So I finished my phone call. I get out of my car. I start to walk towards the store. There's a guy standing there. I would describe this guy as being in his mid 50s. Okay. You know, well established guy, lived a lot of his life. So I'm walking towards the store and he goes, Hey, I, uh, is that a is that a custom paint job on your car? Because I drove my car there with the cell shaded. Yeah. Thing. I said, oh, it's, it's a vinyl wrap. And he goes, he goes, did you make it yourself? And I said, yeah, I, I actually work in uh, film, so I had my art department. They made it, and then I had it printed and put on the car. And he goes, well, it's definitely different, isn't it? And I was like, did you wait here in the parking lot? 
to just tell me that you don't like my car? And he goes, you could tell that guy was like, nobody ever talks to that guy back. Yeah. Oh, like, you he, said that back to him? Yeah. And he's like, he's Good. just like, no, I just, I just noticed your car. It's different. And I, and I was just like, what the fuck? And we walked into the grocery store together. It's like, the fuck is wrong with this guy? Like, why would he sit around in the parking lot waiting for me to, to get out and tell me that he insult you. doesn't like my car in the most passive aggressive fucking way? That's really bizarre. What was he expecting you to do? Be like, yeah. Yeah, no, it's different. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sorry. They were out of the white color. I just really need attention. So, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, you do. I recognize oh. you. We we drove somewhere separately. We drove to the same place earlier today separately, and I passed you. It has been an interesting. You didn't pass me. Well, huh. you came from the other side. In you your came... Prius? Yeah, I got there way before <laughs> you. Listen to me. You drove out of the parking lot before me. <laughs> oh, okay. And <coughs> I followed you the wrong way to go to this place. How that, dare you? That mean, that's not following. I don't know if he knows what following means. I did follow you. I went right. right. As in you went the wait. He I, went the wrong way. He went down Mainer. And we so if gone, you went the wrong way and he was following you, then he was following you. But the you just way. went. No, the he wrong. said he followed me the wrong way. Is what he said. So he followed you going the wrong way. Oh, I thought you were saying you can't follow he, someone going the wrong way. I thought you said he went the wrong way and then you went with him because you were. Following I did. Him. That's oh. what I said. I thought you meant you went the wrong way while following me. Uh, no, he said you went the wrong way. Well, and he that's still different, you. isn't it? I followed you in a different direction. That's what I did, Gus. Uh, you went the wrong you came way. From a different direction. You I went, went the shitty, right way. You went a shitty direction. I went fast. By the way, there is a street in Austin that my GPS cannot pronounce. Do you know the name of the street? I bet there's a bunch of them. I don't it's know. In what East is Austin. Pedernales. How do you pronounce C H I C O N? Oh, oh, Chicon. Chicon. Here it says Chicken. Or Chicon Street. Chicon. Mm -hmm. It says Chicken. Chicken. No, mine does the same thing. <laughs> Turn left on Chicken Street. <laughs> Does that make Every your time. blood boil? No, or in a few years it'll be the accepted pronunciation in Austin. Oh, it will be. Yeah. yeah. Just go down Chicken Street. <laughs> like I even said earlier that you went down Manor, which is spelled Manor. Anywhere else in the world that street would be called Manor. In fucking hipster Don't Austin, it's called Manor. Well, unless it was someone's name called like Dave Manor, and that's why it's spelled that way. Man, Still how would you time, spell Manor then? One of the one of the first the times I went to LA. I was on the phone with someone asking, where are you? I was at that In-N-Out by the airport. And I was like, yeah, I'm at the In-N-Out. Uh, I, I love that In-N-Out, because the planes go right overhead. Yeah. I was like, I'm at uh, uh, the In-N-Out on Sepulveda. They're like, what? The In-N-Out on Sepulveda. Yeah. I don't know. I was like, the, the In-N-Out by the airport. Okay, we'll see you there. They pulled up. like, oh, you mean you're at the In-N-Out on Sepulveda? Sepulveda. Sepulveda. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck, fuck off. Oh, fuck everything about this. It probably sounded like you were just breaking up. I, <laughs> I didn't know that was how it was pronounced. <laughs> Just looks like Sepulveda. Yeah, I've never heard someone pronounce it the way you did. I've only heard a GPS pronounce it. Fuck everything about this. <laughs> I'm sorry that we don't have the same accent as you guys. <laughs> just, I don't. I mean, the thing that annoyed me was being corrected and told I was saying it wrong. Well, I think they probably meant it in a way where, oh, this is how I know the street to be, and you no said way. this other. Oh, thing. Oh, you're sure saying that different, aren't you? <laughs> I just want to stand out here and tell you that you're really saying it different. Kind of Put this bullshit. screen up again. Put it up. Really? Didn't, didn't you say that we, like most people say Montreal wrong? Yeah. And Toronto. I feel Which like I just said wrong. As an American, Wait, how do you I'm never going back to Melbourne, Australia Melbourne. ever again because you can't say it right. Just say Melbourne. Fuck it. Embrace it. Exactly. If you say Melbourne, people go Melbourne. I say Melbourne. And then if you say Melbourne, they go, oh, Melbourne. Like they, they will even make fun of you for trying to pronounce it correctly. In Australia? Yes. It's no, no, too no. much. You should pronounce it how you would read it. Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how you pronounce <laughs> Melbourne. Melbourne. I mean, I'd say it the way I said it because that's how I'd read that word. I, I also... You shouldn't change it based on how they say do it. Do you sure. say... Do you say Barcelona? No. But my mother was uh, Castilian Spanish. Yeah, it's, and, it's uh, Barcelona. She, she would always pronounce things with a list. I'm not I mean, saying it that great, but... I, I lost yeah, and you even, like, occasionally when we first met you, like, you would... Tell me sayings like Spanish sayings. I'd be like, "What the fuck are you saying?" Yeah, because I would say it with a lisp. Or yeah. like, or you would have like sayings from Spain. I'm like, I've never, I've never heard that. Like, think of, yeah. or like think the, the, the mira que cosa. Mira que cosa. Yeah. Well, that'd be like me. Like, if you like, we went to Leicester, right? How do you say that? I would say Leicester now, but I said Leicester. Well, how, yeah. Winter. How do you say it now? Lice, Leicester. No, but how do you say it now that you know it's pronounced? Leicester. Right, but you're putting a hard R on the end. I would Le say Leicester. Leicester. That'd be like me saying, Leicester. "No, no, it's Leicester." Yeah, <laughs> Leicester. But you don't you don't read that way. So why would you say it that way? I'm just saying it's like Melbourne. I'm like I've given up trying to meet you in the middle. I'm just yeah, saying Melbourne. Yeah, it's just weird. Like everyone goes to Melbourne is like, oh, you're saying Melbourne wrong. But it's like it's just a place name. Read it. Yeah, just yeah. I don't get it. it. I don't understand it. But no, for uh, 
Montreal. People say Montreal, and then some other people who you just say, said the same no, word twice. No, it's Montreal, but some people say Mont Montreal. Oh, I it's like M oh, like oh, I, I would say Montreal. Mon. Mon. Yeah, yeah, yeah say it's Mon. Mon Montreal. Yeah. Montreal. And how and then, how's Toronto? Toronto. People who are from Toronto don't say the T. Oh, so it's Toronto, not Toronto. Yeah. That's just that's once it's again, just, it's it's just, just an just, accent thing. No, it's, it's just, just an accent thing. From. Yeah. If someone says Toronto, obviously you're not. I would say Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. It sounds like you throw an extra syllable in there. No, I'm ta I'm yeah. All right. <laughs> or if you want to get really into it, you go Toronto. Toronto. Where are you, where are you going on vacation? Toronto. <laughs> Toronto. So I pointed out, I'm going to PAX Australia to do the keynote after I just said I'm never going to Melbourne again. <laughs> well, I will go to Melbourne, but I'm, I give up. I'm trying to pronounce it in what the, is that? the proper way. Uh, that is October. So I'm stuck with an interesting scenario. Scenario. And, by the way, I just want to say I have I have the greatest <laughs> assistant in the world. Ellie is awesome. She's like it's like taking Gavin and Barbara and going mush and making one another new person. So just She's, the accent from Barbara, but all the personality traits of me. What? From Gavin. She Jewish? You said the accent of Barbara. Not Jewish. It's all the good <laughs> stuff. The accent of Gavin. <laughs> and the personality traits of me. Also, Sorry, I'm just going to breeze Mrs. right Dunkelman. by that. That was an easy joke. Oh, yeah, wait, so you're saying. Every time I make a joke. Yes, because those are the only Jewish people who watch our podcast. <laughs> I just always feel bad. I don't know. Whenever I make a Jewish joke, I feel bad for like your parents are going to get mad. For all mad the at suffered, me. suffering and that hardships also. that we've Hey, listen, I'm, I'm half Jewish on my mother's and... side, that means which you makes are me. Jewish. That you know of. I think so. Yeah. So, so, uh, so she's she's us mushed. Yeah. So, so wait, wait. So she's, she's British. She's your favorite Brit. She. Uh, it's close, dude. Ooh. Close. It's close. We're Man, gonna have to make that much progress in such a little time. We're gonna have to have some sort of British off. Yeah. So, so who's got more teeth? Do that. I'm doing the <laughs> keynote for PAX Australia, which is at the end of October, and then we're holding an event in a place you might know called London. It's in the UK. London. RTX Not London. At London. RTX London. We're having our event there, and that is something like two and a half weeks before Australia. So it's enough time to where coming back to the U.S. Let me tell you something. Yeah. You do not want to go from the U.K. to Australia. But no, but we go somewhere else. Or the other way around. And then do a fun thing, and oh, then okay. go to Australia from there. Yeah. So Wait, so how, what's the order? It goes U.K. first? U.K. first. Okay. London. London. And then we Something have fun. about two weeks. I think it's like it's about two. Weeks. It's like eleven days. Okay. So it's enough time to. If I came back to the U.S., it'd be like, oh, hang out. Yeah. Or I'd move <laughs> on and go to Sydney from there via somewhere else. Mm. I don't know where. You mean Melbourne? I said Sydney, but I meant Melbourne. Well, you would fly into Sydney first. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There's a direct where you to go from? Melbourne non -stop. from some places. You know where I've always wanted to go that I've never been. There's a nonstop from. Hmm. It's a little place called Africa. I've never been to. Can that I go continent. though? Can I? Can I come with? You want to go to Africa? Yeah, because I've, I've never been. I'm trying to convince Gavin to go with me to the South Pole of the, that, er the Earth. <laughs> as, as opposed, opposed to. to... <laughs> and we'd have to go. So, uh, uh, so according to Brandon, you're going to the North Pole. We're going to the North Pole, which is oh, no. off the coast of it's the been magnetic so North many Pole. Years. <laughs> There's many YouTube videos to be made around the, on the South Pole. Like, you could do everything that's been done on YouTube, but just at the South Pole. Yeah. Fidget spinner at the South Pole. Yeah, Check exactly. that out. Billion views. Thousand degree knife at the South there you Pole. Go. <laughs> at the South Pole with a thousand degree knife. Hydraulic pressing the South Pole. <laughs> Can we film an always open at the South Pole? 10,000 calorie meal at the South yeah. Pole. It, it, it's just waiting for someone to go there. I want to see there. the evolution of penguin dance. <laughs> and then we could react to all of those videos. We could just react. To and then we'll just watch the videos we made. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I really do, do I, this year pole. before the vlog is done. I want to go to the South Pole. It's one of the things I want to do. It's too expensive. Where, but where it is it? horrifically expensive. But you also Africa, though, right? Yeah, I want to go to Egypt. But that would check off all the continents for me. <laughs> I want to do a picture too close to the pyramid. Mm. Did you go to Ellis Island? It was raining. Didn't go. Okay. Gavin was going to go all the way to Ellis Island to take a picture with the Statue of Liberty too close to it. Worth it. It's you got it on Brooklyn Bridge. We were right next to it. I'm slurring. <laughs> <laughs> the going to Ellis Island, Island is going to the Statue of Liberty is such a waste of time. It's so. Boring. I've heard. I've heard it's crap, and you're much better just looking at the Statue of Liberty from but you Jersey or wherever. Oh, wait, wait, what's it closer to? New York or New Jersey? Uh, it's probably closer to Manhattan, I think. All right. Well, yeah. I've I've still never been to the island because I heard it was shit. Yeah, it's but pretty shit. I do want to take a picture right up to the whatever the base of the Statue of Liberty is. Like by the toe. It'll just be a wall. I, you can't even get up there, can you? No, it'd be I don't like, think so. It'd be like a marble wall, probably. Can, do they still let you get in it, or is that over? What the, what? the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, can so, you crawl up inside? Is that real? If you want to, if you, you want to be able to, I've if been you want to go to the what? crown, 
it is about three to four months in advance. There's two things: the Crown of the Statue of Liberty what? and Alcatraz. You gotta if you're gonna go to either of those places, don't expect to book the same month. You gotta book months and months in advance, and you can't like scalp the tickets because they're tied to your Bollocks. driver's license and your identity. Bollocks. Well, went to Alcatraz day off, and you paid the day of. What does that mean? Wait, yeah. What does that mean you went the day of? Because, of course, you go the day of. You always go the day you're going. We were just like, you want to go to Alcatraz? Let's go. And you, when was that? April of last year. G oh, okay. Maybe I'm thinking about the night thing. Oh, the night thing. Yes. That's what you're talking yeah. about. Maybe yeah. that's the thing that's in except, high demand. Except I went at night. So I thought it was the night thing that was hard to get to. All right. Apparently, Gavin is fucking special. Maybe he just went on a slow day. He knows the slow-mo <laughs> slow guy. A slow-mo day? He knows the slow-mo <laughs> guy. You know that no, beer? that beer's mine. You you have another one. Get your own beer. Get the fuck out. You can have free beer in a, it's like a fucking hour on a plane. God hey! God. Asshole. Party, 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 party. Gus, party, would you like party, the rest party, of mine? I'm just enjoying I'm, I'm all right. No. <laughs> speaking of can enjoying stuff. Beer, please? Speaking of enjoying stuff. Oh. Let me remind you. Good segue. This podcast is also brought to you by NatureBox. Might be the <gasps> best segue in Gus's history as host. What do you do when you want a snack, but all you can find is junk food? Rely on your self-control to resist the temptation. Please, you eat the junk food. So start snacking healthy with Nature Box. What do we got here? Look at that. Uh, Nature Box makes snacks that actually taste great and are better for you. Created with high quality ingredients that are free from artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. You, you can feel great about snacking. Uh, my personal, well, we got what we got right here. We have garlic plantains, salt and vinegar veggie chips. Asiago and cheddar cheese crisps. Um, the Nature Box recently made their service even better. Now you can order as much as you want, as often as you want, with no minimum purchase required, and you can cancel any time. It's simple. Go to naturebox.com, nature check their snack catalog. It's over 100 snacks to choose from. They're constantly adding delicious new snacks. Choose the snacks you want, and they'll deliver them right to your door. With Naturebox, you never get bored. There are new snacks each month inspired by real customer feedback. And if you try, if you ever try a snack you don't like, Naturebox will replace it for free. But right now, Right now, you'll save even more. NatureBox is offering our listeners 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash roosterteeth. Don't chew into the mic. That's naturebox.com slash roosterteeth for 50% off your first order. Naturebox.com slash roosterteeth. I have not tried these salt and vinegar veggie chips before. Thanks. And I'm actually very excited to try them. Pass those cheese things, Burns. Oh. So share the love. Yeah, these are good, dude. Yeah. So a uh, 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 viewer pointed out to me, Bernie, the Statue of Liberty is not on Ellis Island. Oh right, it's actually not right. Ellis Island is the That's immigration the point. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? What? But island? he was saying the entire time we were in New York that he was going to Ellis Island, so I got it in my head. But Which yeah. one is Statue of Liberty Island? It's a Statue of Liberty. You go to that. Ellis Island is different. They didn't run all the immigration literally at the feet of the Statue of Liberty. I just thought the Statue of Liberty Island was Ellis Island. No, Oops. It makes sense. Why do you think that? Yeah, why are these cheesy? This is so good. Well, wow, you. They still had liquid in it. You put it on top of me. Yeah, for what? <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I wasn't worried because I thought it was empty. I didn't think it would actually fall on me or my laptop. Oh, that would have been bad. Yeah. I think it's my laptop. It's got time machine. I fucking love time machine. I can't believe there's not easy ways to back up everything like that. I don't use time machine. Why not? <clears throat> Jesus. I've got nothing I need on it. It's all on external drives. <laughs> that are way too big to you be backed up. Give mm. Gus's beer. All right, just no, open no, another no. one. That's yours. All right, I'm drinking up. You got you a flight. You got to get ready for it. You know, be super happy. Ashley. Ashley likes when I get drunk. Really? She does. Why don't Do you, you make her happy more she often? She was just because you're a nicer like, person I'm, that I'm way? drinking at a bar, <laughs> and I'm going, oh, this is really starting to hit me. I'm getting a little tipsy. And she goes, hey, hey, hey. Does she like do this? this? She goes like this. She goes, hey, hey, hey. I'm like, what's your goal here? Like, you're trying to get me in bed? It's like, that's, <laughs> that's like, I don't need to be drunk for you to get me in Maybe bed. Maybe you're starting to realize you're more fun when you're drunk. Oh. Mm. Oh, man. She's, yeah. she's over. Uh, she's over burning. She likes you when you're drunk. Do you like her when she's drunk? <clears throat> Dude. To a certain level, and then it gets <laughs> off the fucking. Well, gets, that's anybody, right? I guess so. Yeah. I like even my. No one's fun when they're too drunk. Even my too drunk is super sloppy. It's the thing that I don't like about me being drunk is, I think you fall into a very specific category when you're drunk. You're either a angry drunk, or like a laughing drunk, or okay. a funny drunk. I am a dumb drunk or a loud drunk. I hate loud drunks. I'm a dumb drunk. I get super dumb. And it's like, I get so mad at myself the next second. I'm like, I'm so fucking dumb. What's the dumbest thing you've done when you were drunk? You was the fulcrum? Oh, yeah, that was pretty dumb. That was pretty dumb. Yeah. I've done a lot of dumb stuff. I've done a lot of dumb stuff when I'm drunk. And it makes me so mad at myself. One happy thing. Let's embrace it. One thing mm. I'm glad about when I'm drunk, I never do With stunts. You. Yeah. That's right. I... You never do stunts? Well, like some people are like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to climb oh, yeah. up to the top of that roof. 
I've, n I've never. I hate like, those even, types of drunks. I could be the drunkest like I've ever them. been, and I will not put my body in danger. And I'm yeah. About that. Uh, we, we know a guy who's like that. I had so many friends in college who they were type, the type of drunk who would uh, wander. And I was always the person who'd have to look after oh, them, God. and they would just wander away from me, and I would feel feel responsible. For oh, that's reminded me of this this ad in the UK. You know how we had all those like shock ads where it's like a mm -hmm. gruesome car crash or something. There was one for being drunk and like thinking you're a superhero, and it actually starts like with a superhero guy reaching up to get this balloon for some like girls mm -hmm. or something, and he's in a superhero costume, and then it just cuts to him. Just as a normal bloke falling and like smacking himself. Down. Oh god! He's just like in a crumpled heap at the bottom. He's like, you know, I'm invincible when you're drunk. And it's just like, oh. And, it, and you think the advert's going somewhere else because it's just a superhero <clears throat> grabbing a balloon. Is there something Dark. you enjoy doing when you're drunk more than you like doing sober? Yeah, drinking, running, <laughs> running. For me, it's dancing. Dancing is so fun when you're drunk. Yeah. Because you don't uh, give a. Fuck. What do I? Is there anything I do when I'm drunk that I don't? Anal. No. Hmm? What's the question? Is there something you enjoy doing or more just when like you're drunk? Something that you use it to. Oh, be like, sure. Dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like referring to us as dudes, and then you're going to tell us something. Dudes, come. <laughs> yeah. Dudes, oh, dudes. Comma. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> it's dudes, exclamation mark. Dudes, I blew a guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was the rest of that story. <laughs> no, so you, ne you never made out with a dude? Or like moved on a dude when you were drunk? Have or you? Sober? I kissed a guy. I don't remember made out's the word. I think I've kissed a guy, but it's always been on camera stuff. I don't think I've ever kissed a guy. Like, I've seen a lot of people any amorous situation switch their preference. Like I know, I know gay guys who get straight. <laughs> yeah, we know one guy guy who, yeah. who gets super straight. Is he not just maybe bisexual? Just whatever. Yeah. He's yeah. Just like, I mean, more fluid game. in that. <laughs> Everything's fair game. No titles. He's fluid. Bonded with people around him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you see that thing? That story? That I guess. There, apparently there's a company that owns the mp3 license and they've just said it's over what no it's more over. no They're, more making said, mp3 no more licensing mp3 mp3 is dead as a format what is the traditional format now the standard format they said now to use aac okay sure okay let it go what does that stand for audio advanced audio codec i think is what it is oh which is as fucking to... stupid because apple <clears throat> stopped supporting enhanced podcasts in garage band we oh. stopped making an AAC format version of this podcast because of it. What does that have to do with the AAC? So this though? is MP3 now and I This iTunes? is MP3, yeah. What's wrong with MP3? Apart from it's really compressed and shit. That's it. You nailed it. Yeah. Is that it? It's the one the, thing the part, you don't The want. problem with MP3 is there's no DRM. Mm. So that's I'm sure it's all motivated by money. It's somebody's, all motivated by getting paid. They right, can't just by add somebody got paid right there. So it's all motivated by companies that want to uh, lock down content. But do they have any authority to say that? Like, can the USB guy goes? I mean, the GIF guy can't say the call stuff GIF, and everyone's like, "Fuck you, it's GIF." Yeah, he doesn't have like a fucking license. His MP3? Yeah, the, there's a company that owns uh, what is it? Is it Sorensen? How, how no, not? it's like Frohoff or something. How uh, are they not? Okay, yeah, Billion Fraunhofer. Yes. MP3 player? Do they get money for every MP3? How player? did they not get but sued by the RIAA? I think what they were doing is waiting for MP3 to spread so they could strike and sue everyone at once. I never realized how similar RIA is to RTAA. Oh, huh. Yeah. It's just a cross that you're missing. Yeah. What's a cross on a T called? A cross? Mm-hmm. A twat. Nailed it. <laughs> Anybody want to go to LA? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Burns flying a plane. Wait, instead of see. you? No, in addition. Oh. Did you know, one, I don't know if you remember this, one time you turn, gave me it? your first class seat. I did. Do you I remember that? I don't know if I remember that. No, tell me about it. We were on a flight, and uh, Jordan was going to be on that flight too, but you didn't know if she was necessarily coming on that trip or not. Yeah. But she had a seat in economy, and so you switched with me so you could sit with her, and you gave me your seat. Jordan in... Swiss? No, why would Jordan I be saying Max, her. Uh, that's, why I like, that's why I asked. Oh. Yeah. I wanted to wait, make sure you said she like three or four times. Yeah. Then I would so I also, right so this is the thing that happens to me on a regular basis, <laughs> is if a I don't do it so much anymore, honestly. But when a military person would get on the plane, I would give up my first class seat to them, and mm -hmm. Gus and Jeff would be like, "You're a fucking idiot, <laughs> giving up your first class seat." But I would, I would always do it. It's nice of you. Yeah, but I, sometimes I'll do that I'm, too. Like, I'm just an asshole. At least Jeff was a vet. Yeah, he's just he's <laughs> an hypocrite. Yeah. But um, the uh, we we ran into a really weird situation where uh, Ashley came to San Francisco for the vlog that we did. Uh, she came to the to the trip as well, but she kind of did it last minute. Um, and so 
Ellie and I were booked on my itinerary, mm. and Ashley wasn't. And then all of a sudden, I got upgraded, and I was like, oh, my God. Did Ellie get upgraded and Ashley didn't? How are we going to fucking tackle this? And I envisioned this scenario where I was going to end up a coach and the two of them were going to be <laughs> up in first class. Um, but actually, because of our new stupid travel system we have at Rooster Teeth. So stupid. Which we're supposed to get feedback for, but I thought I'd just talk about it on the podcast. It fucking sucks. Uh, oh, you use it, huh? Ellie was booked on a... No, Ellie does. So okay. she was booked on a separate itinerary, so she didn't get upgraded when I got upgraded. Mm. Wait, what's so. this new travel system? Oh. Eugenics? What's it called? E e e Eugencia. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't use that. <laughs> no, no. We'll see. It's just like, uh, it's supposed to make everything better. Gen, 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 better. We, we, we have yet to see that, but we'll find out. Oh, uh, yeah, I Trial walked run. in. So when, it did save me a hassle, though, of like having to deal with that scenario. When they launched uh, using that, you know, uh, it was people who took point on that. They said, if you have any questions, talk to uh, <laughs> Bethany or Steph. And uh, like the day it launched, I walked into Bethany's office. It's like, so. Uh, all the airlines on this thing, huh? She goes, yeah, every airline, anything you want to book. So I like, I looked up a route. And I was like, it's no Southwest. She goes, oh yeah, well, uh, that's coming soon. I was like, so is it not every airline? She goes, well, it's most of them. <laughs> Why not just say most of them? All right. Do you want to fly Southwest? There are certain routes I fly Southwest, like Vegas. Austin to San Diego or Austin to Vegas. Yeah, they do a direct. Nonstop. To. They do a nonstop direct. I would love a time in my life where I'm not like a travel nerd. I miss those days. I'm so I'm like. It was fun to travel when it was like, oh, what's all this crazy crap? It's all never these gonna airlines be like that, that again, though, for you. No, I think if I didn't fly for like ten years, I'd be new coming into it. Well, I still enjoy it every time. To me, every time it's still. I'm the same way fun. too. Yeah. But Gavin did post something the other day, which I think illustrates where he is in life. Where uh, it was after <laughs> the, uh, it was after the Let's Play Live tour. Yeah. And Gavin was at home in Austin. Was Meg there as well? I, what are you talking about? Uh, so you made a tweet where you said, tomorrow is Saturday, and is the first Saturday that I can remember where I don't have to set an alarm. Yeah. I can just go to sleep and wake up whenever I need to wake up. Yeah. And it was, like, refreshing. But it, I get it, because I know what your life's been like for the last three months, and you haven't been able to do that a single day in the last three months. Turns out I don't need an alarm because my cat will wake me up at <laughs> every day. He wants That's to drink water. Great alarms. No matter what. I did, I, I did something the other day at an airport that you, you, oh, you, you taught me about. Oh, you sat in the seat? Oh, nice. How many how many seats did it take? It took me three. Three? <laughs> where Gavin does this thing where sometimes in airports, he'll try to find a seat that faces the direction of Austin, then take a screenshot yeah, of Google he Maps. he tweeted about that one time, and this was at a time I didn't have Google Maps, so I just tried opening app, Apple Maps. And I was like, why isn't it? It's not showing an arrow anywhere. Is it just the dot? And I was just spinning in circles with that little dot. But see, that's a really anything. sad thing. And I hate that I did that. That's the the games I have to make up in my head because <laughs> we spend so much time in airports. So it's horrendous. Someone just posted a animated GIF, GIF of during the Ruby season one live stream when I walked in and kissed Carrie, like in the middle oh, of yeah, the Oh, that. yeah. Yeah. That was so, a long time ago. Nice moment. He tasted like bologna. He so, probably just had a sandwich. Maybe he did. Probably. I haven't seen Carrie like like No regrets, man. No regrets. Carrie looks fine. good. He looks fresh. He does? Yeah. Mm. Oh, there it is. He's there it is. Oh, you like properly bent him back like, like yeah, a, give him a, little a 50s dip. ball. Yeah. Come on. Wow. <laughs> I want to remember it, you know. <laughs> what room was that? That's a 636. That was at the old studio. animation studio. The studio, yeah. Well, yeah. You see facing, the, you see the double like doors there? Doors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, that it, in times, my head, that's, that place is so much bigger than it was. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, it's been so long. I was thinking about that earlier. We've been now in this building in Stage 5 three years. Yep. That's crazy. It's a long time. We, I feel like it was just, I feel like it was only maybe a year ago we did like the Wait. moving podcast in the U-Haul over there. So we've been in this building longer than we were in, the, longer than I was in 636, I guess. Because uh, I've been here for five and a half years. We think we were, were we four years at 636? I'm just talking about me, Barbara Dunkelman. Mm -hmm. You think we're going to get pushed out of here? That parking lot makes me nervous. It's full now. It's full again. Not full, but they took away oh. like three fourths of it. Yeah, I mean, people who look on Google Maps and see it, Google Maps and see it. Wait, what happened? The, go look at the back parking lot. It's gone. The now? the housing development behind our studio. The so the studio where we live, the campus, oh. is owned by the city of Austin, and we rent it from the city. And uh, there's a big development that's going on where they're building a bunch of houses and commercial development as well. There's a very cool new Alamo as part of that. But we came to work one day and like half of our back parking lot was gone. Like the fence was suddenly way closer to all the other buildings. And now they're building houses there. 
I just wonder what happened to all the trucks that were parked back there. Don't know. All the transportation trucks for the films? Yeah, I have no fucking clue. I'm also wondering what's gonna happen when those people fucking move into those houses, and we've been here for years, and they're like, yeah, they were making loud noises at two in the morning. It's like, <laughs> that's kind of what we do. Yeah. And you, but then it's, it's us who has to that. change. Yeah, that, right? we'll have to suddenly like not explode stuff in the parking lot. <laughs> I, I was blowing up so much stuff out there. Yeah. I was out there the other day watching one of those <laughs> machines like eat up the gravel. I don't know if you saw it. It was like, it was like this huge heavy machinery that just like went around and just like, brum, 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 like ate up all the parking lot and was just breaking it up. And it looked like one of the robots from Horizon Zero Dawn to me. Like it was just out there, like it was like grazing on the parking lot and just eating the parking <laughs> lot and spitting it out. I still haven't played that game. So, so someone good. someone wrote to me and said that uh, military members in uniform are not supposed to accept anybody else's seat on an airplane. Really? Which this was years ago when I felt like I saw people. I feel like I haven't done it in a while, but whenever someone would fly in uniform, I feel like that's less frequent now. Mm -hmm. It used to be very very frequent that someone would fly. And in fact, I was wondering. Why the fuck are we flying active military people on commercial airlines? Like, isn't there not? Don't they have planes in the military? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wonder about that. I don't. I feel like I don't see that as often. They do have a section on American Airlines where they ask people to board. Um, it's also on the check-in machine. It says, "Are you U.S. military in uniform, out of uniform, or no?" Can I be? Can I be honest? I don't like that. Why? I, it seems like a weird I question like, to ask every passenger. Yeah, it, it are you like, a member of the military? It oh. should just have like a military button mm -hmm. that you press if you are checking right. in. Because it, it it applies, it must apply to like 99% of people who are checking in aren't military, I mm -hmm. assume. Maybe more. Yeah, it's a weird thing to apply to everyone. No, oh, somebody said, previously I said he tastes like salt and vinegar chips. That's what he tastes oh, like. Okay. Yeah, when I kissed him. Oh, yeah. Salt and vinegar, veggie chips. Carry that is. I oh. assume it's just a respect thing that they put that for everyone. Like, really making sure that the military people feel like they're being thought of. What kind of chips are those? Salt and vinegar veggie chips. But veggie chips are what? Like, uh, I think the, the one, the one I mean, of the ones I have Potato chips like are veggie taro chips, Taro right? root. There may be some other ones in there. Is a potato a vegetable? It's a tuber. This beer is terrible. A YouTuber? This, one, this beer tastes of the cap. It's like metallic. <laughs> this, <laughs> this potato chip lost its ad revenue. <laughs> we met some people at the Crater Summit who had lost Gus. Ew, that's terrible. They had lost eight. That's awful. Someone is gonna have to fucking clean that up. That's the bug roll. Way to go, Barbara. God damn it. I thought he would catch it. No, we're we catch people, it with We met people who had lost 85% of their revenue, Gus. Jesus. 85%. They were making 15% of what they normally make. I know uh H3H3 uh had a had a discussion about that, you know, but finding other ways to Focus their uh, their energy. I like Ethan. Yeah, I met. I, I spent. I spent a decent amount of time with him at the Creator Summit. I like that guy. Yeah, I felt. Yeah. Uh, I felt bad for him. He had that uh, that kind of expose about the YouTube ad revenue on racist comment that that ended up being debunked, and he had to like take that video down. <laughs> yeah, and go back on it. Content ID. Claim. But it was still like it was still. It seemed like at least he's trying to get to the bottom of it and investigate it. I feel like when your bread and butter is the hot button issues of YouTube, you're going to step in some stuff occasionally. Mm -hmm. Like I think Phil DeFranco does a, a very good job of of navigating that. But that guy has a level of experience on YouTube that not many people have. Yeah, it's a complicated platform. Crushing on Patreon, by the way. Yeah, Phil DeFranco lo launched a he Patreon. He must be number one on there. Right? Oh, I didn't know. Oh, he had I don't Patreon. think there's any question at this yeah. point. Or yeah. So he did a thing where he hid his. Uh, at total dollar amount, yeah, oh, which I, I think you should do. I think everyone should do. What? It wasn't an option at the beginning. It wasn't an option, so I think it's unfair to people who started earlier that they can't choose to do it without like it being an event. But it's kind of normal to hide your money. Like that's kind of a weird thing. Like I, I think everyone I feel should like hide on that their platform. Money. Well, a lot of the time, uh, the audience appreciates tr transparency where you can give it, and I, I feel like if you can give it, then do they expect it? I, you know, yeah, he, holy shit, he's got 15,000 patrons. That's a lot, Over 15,000. That's wow. a lot. How many does... To put it, those are monthly patrons. How many does Colin have? Looking it up. I'd be curious to see that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because he has quite a, a few as well. 6,000. Okay, so... Double, double. Double Colin. That. Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, to put it in perspective, 32,000 people supported Laser Team, and we broke a record for crowdfunding mm -hmm. on, on Indiegogo. And, uh... You know that that was a one-time event. This is a monthly subscription. Yeah, and we've been doing we've been doing business for uh, fifteen years. I think the last numbers I don't know what the last numbers we released were, but I I should be careful that we have 
Anyway, I'll be careful. I don't know what we said last for subscribers on Rooster Teeth, but we we have a published number for the monthly subscribers on Rooster Teeth. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's weird when we to see that now. I felt like yeah, we didn't talk about that for a long time, and now like it's a number you can Google it and look it up. I don't know what it is. And if you're watching right now live, you're one of them. Thank you. Thank you. The support. We we appreciate it. All right. Well, it's time to wrap this up. Bernie needs to get to an airplane anyway. Oh, it's true. Oh, uh, put so it on me. I do. But yeah, it's, I, I it's so that you don't extend and say not yet. Uh, I do want to remind everyone, if you're watching right now, uh, stay tuned after the credits for a little sneak peek of CCTV, which is Couch Hop's new podcast, which will be starting up next week. Um, and until then, we'll, we'll see you guys next week as well. Love you. Those guys are fucking weird. <laughs> I'm dragging you guys We're with me. We're not going to stop. Trevor. This is in the side of the road. Don't want the people listening at six home on their, on their six, naps. Come on. People trying to listen over the sounds of two boats creaking in the water. I mean, what's so hard, well, dude? You I mean, gobble some of it and then you go home. Is that some what you would do? <laughs> did, you, did you say gobble some of it? Yeah. I think that's the vibe. Is LA right. is so spread out and everyone is so isolated that when you have a chance at a human connection at a grocery store and your elbow touches a stranger and you think, but I don't want, a, I life. don't want a, a connection well, with a are about to with a us here with with their boat. Oh hey, look at this beautiful stork. Landing on the water. Stork. I like the lady with the dogs. Karen. There's a lady with the dogs that's been watching this the whole entire time. Hi, lady. He has a mansion, so it's like, this is his side, and then this is like the mansion part where we stayed. So <laughs> we've barely seen each other unless he was recording. But I do have, like, the bathroom I was using was near the kitchen. So when they were cooking, they know when I shit. Now this is our first episode. We're just trying out some wacky shit. We kind of knew this would be a train wreck.